All right. <clears throat> That's enough of that. Don't want you all getting too fucking rowdy with the chocobo theme. Here I am, your boy, six and two thirds. More affectionately known in certain circles as the birthday Bolshevik. If you know, you know. It is my birthday. How are we doing today on my birthday, which is today? I'm doing pretty okay. It's like any other day, but we're here to do that. You shut your mouth, Pfizer. <laughs> How dare you? I'm super old. Fucking ridiculous. One of my younger friends today made a joke about Pompeii to me. Directly at me. <laughs> the bitch. <laughs> what are we doing here today? We are doing an Outside the Lens Sega edition. What is Outside the Lens? I go back and look at games from my childhood that I have not played since my childhood. I play them for 15 minutes. I judge them on two criteria using my current day shitty gamer vision. We look at box art. We look at, we got a new segment. We look at box art. We talk about some trivias. We play the game for 15 minutes and then I bullshit the entire way through. That's it. That's all we do. That's all we're gonna do. So, we're going to get right into it. Uh, I don't like having long intros. Uh, come for the bro down tomorrow morning if you want to see a fucking 20 minute intro. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right. First game on the menu today is Technocop. There it is. There it is in all its glory. Okay, now for those who are not familiar to Outside the Lens, I usually judge, judge. Uh, box art on like two criteria, usually two criteria, sometimes three. Uh, criteria one is does the box art execute? Does it do the things it is supposed to do? As a eight year old child, would this make you want to rent and or buy it? That's one of the criteria. And the other criteria is just a personal criteria, which I believe, you know, if you're selling a video game, the art itself should encapsulate action. Not only should encapsulate action, but should encapsulate, you know, action that's relative to the actual game that you're about to play, which kind of bleeds into criteria one. So it's like criteria one and a half, but you get what I'm saying. So does this box art execute? Does it do the things it is supposed to do? For me personally, uh, my opinion, which is that's what all this fucking show is. Uh, yes, <laughs> it does. And it did. Because I remember as an eight year old child seeing this right after I saw Robocop, the movie, which is not for eight year old children <laughs> whatsoever. That is not a children's movie. I don't know how. It's funny because like I used to talk to my friends and be like, how how are they marketing FNAF, Five Nights at Freddy's, at children? It's about a, a child serial murderer. How is that geared towards children? But, you know, the they were they were doing it back here in what is it, 1990? No, 88. They were doing it in 88 then, too. So, I mean, Robocop was doing it. So Technocop's doing it, too. Um, better than Robocop. We shall see, Vicer. We, oh, it's funny. It's funny that I mentioned Robocop and you mentioned Robocop. We'll get to that in just a second. So I think the box art hits. I think it slaps. I think if you're an eight year old boy, this speaks to you. You know, look at those blades. Look how gigantic those fucking trapezoids are. Holy shit. That man, that's to be honest with you. Those are the kind of sunglasses that I want because like I don't like any if I can see anything above or below the lens fucks with me all day long. Yeah, Frank glasses, exactly. Big aviators. Like, those aren't even aviators. Those are just, this man, he's got two private windshields on his fucking face. Um, so I think the box art slaps. Uh, there is no, hey, Amanda, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I can't remember the other uh, criteria. There's no action, uh, so I think it suffers in that regard. It's just some cool dude with a fucking desert eagle. This is way bigger than his own head. But in that regard, I think it works. I think it works. Glasses covered up my furrow bra, so I avoid them. <laughs> always, always skeptical, Vicerous. New segment! 
segment. All right, we're gonna try a new segment. Uh, I got a new segment here for you guys. Uh, hold on, let me, I gotta go all the way down. I should have fucking redid this, but gotta go all the way down to this. All right, so after box art, and I may fuck up, or well, definitely gonna fuck up, but I may fuck with the actual sequencing here and do this towards the end. Who knows, we'll try it out. All right, so we're gonna turn, <laughs> we're gonna turn our primary monitor on. We're gonna come over here. Well, that's not what I wanted. That's my Twitter. You guys don't need to see that. We're gonna look at uh, some fucking video game commercial. Oh God, oh God. Oh no, that's his ad for his channel. There we go. All right, we're gonna check out the, oh no, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I fucked this up already. Holy shit. We're just fucking up left and right. No, that's right. That's right. There is no commercial for Technocop. So I went to the next best thing, which is a RoboCop fried chicken 1990s commercial from Korea. So we're gonna watch that. Lot the hands, fry the chicken. Oh, lot the hands, fry the chicken. 발라 먹으니까 질감 나게 맛있습니다. 더 주세요. 뼈 없는 닭튀김, 이건 먹을 거야? 뼈 없는 닭튀김. 롯데햄 프라이드 치킨. 롯데햄 냉동식품. Oh god, oh god. Okay, hold on. Oh, I forgot to. No, we don't need that anymore. All right, come back, come back, come back, baby, come back. A Robocop, just a good guy overall. Exactly. Try the chicken. Look at their hands. Dry the chicken. Uh. <laughs> So there you go. All right, if Technocop didn't have uh, a commercial, so I just had to slap whatever I could in there. If it isn't a big silly B-Day boy, there he is. Big Frankie, big Frankie homeless. Frankie no home, Frankie no mobility, Frankie potholes, like Frank glasses. Oh, see, Frank said it too, Vicer. You guys, you can split from the same atom. Holy shit, y'all. All right, so that's Technocop. All right, we have some notes. I got some notes. I got a shitload of fucking notes. Oh my god! On this, on this OTL, we have so many notes. Lord, have mercy. And I'm gonna read them directly from the clipboard. I missed my OTL additional for today. Yeah, yeah, I missed my OTL additional for today. I have no idea what Frank's talking about. Uh, I found such a. Oh, oh, he had, he had a, um, he had a suggestion for the OTL. I thought about getting that real quick but then i literally forgot about it after i fucking went and got some coffee this is sober six by the way this body has not touched any drugs any marijuana and you guys will see why very quickly into the stream why i smoke weed <laughs> it's there to medicate <laughs> if it's necessary all right so techno cop ported to the sega in 1990, originally released to home computer consoles in 88, Punk Development handled the Genesis port. Uh, Punk Development were only known for Stormlord and Death Duel, respectively, up to this point. You can tell just by their box art, they definitely had a theme going on. Oh, for next time, Dinosaurs for Hire. Oh, we got it. We got it. All right, let me write this down. Dinosaurs. I will fucking forget that immediately. I've never even heard of that game, to be honest with you. Uh, I like it, though. If Frankie recommends it, it's, it's down. We're down. All right, so Punk Development, they did Stormlord and Death Duel up to that point. And that's all they had done, uh, definitively. Uh, so, you know, they have, like, a vibe and aesthetic here. You can tell just just from the fucking art and what they're, what they're doing with that garbage. So um, when Punk Development ended their partnership with Razorsoft, Jeff Spangenberg, Spangenberg, uh, dissolved the company and founded Iguana Entertainment. So everyone needing Turok for the N64 or South Park, Chef's Love Shack for the Dreamcast, well... Lo and behold, your prayers answered. So, mm hmm. Uh, punk development dissolution likely came from their parent company, Razorsoft. Desi uh, they decided to poke the bear with Sega, and Sega decided to claw their fucking face off <laughs> in response. In 91, I'm going to paraphrase. 
I'm going to paraphrase. So this is, you know, if I'm wrong, who gives a shit? Gamers. Um, in 91, Razorsoft wanted a certain cost slash order size for Sega's proprietary Genesis carts. Sega, likely knowing uh, that their ROI would not match the demand that Razorsoft had in mind, gave them a reduced order run. And Razorsoft and Punk Development then just went and made their own unlicensed self-manufactured Sega carts and sold them. <laughs> they still they still paid royalties to Sega, um, even though they were selling fucking bobo ass Tengen shit. Like they still did pay all royalties back to Sega. So you know they were trying to be somewhat cool about it. Sega were not about that. <laughs> not at all. Uh, Sega did not appreciate that little uh, decision on Razorsoft's fucking part. <laughs> so, like, they revoked uh, Razorsoft and Punk Development's um, uh, development license. And so they said, you can't sell video games anymore. Or at least on the Sega. I don't know about anywhere else. Uh, Razorsoft then sued Sega for breach of the Sherman Antitrust Act, which is the first federal act in 1890 that outlawed uh, like monopoly geared business practices. So no monopolies out there. And that's what the uh, Sherman Antitrust Act is about. Sega then countersued for copyright infringement and breach of contract. So <laughs> like fucking what a fucking mess. <laughs> Like the they did they did solve it. They settled out of court. Like Razorsoft said, hey, give us our fucking dev license back. Sega granted them their dev license back. And like Razorsoft said, hey, we we still want to make games for you. And Sega's like, OK, <laughs> so like. Oh, yeah, I write on paper all the time. Like due to the unusual gore of the time, Technocop had a warning on the back of the box re recommending that no one under 12, 12, should play. Um, Technocop uh, MSRP'd for $59.95 in 1990, which is $141 in today's money. Fucking ridiculous. So... There it is. There it is. That's Technocop. That's all I got about Technocop. Bada bing. Let me catch up on chat real quick. Hey, there he is. What's going on, Ricketts? Ah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the birthday, man. Uh, wishes. Birthday wishes. Uh, you look sober. I can see the sadness. Oh, God. I'm so sad right now, bro. I fucking need drugs. <laughs> so fucking freak after voicing his opinion on the Palestine uprising. Hey, it's Knox. What's going on, Knox? Hey, brother. Glad you could uh, stop by. Fuck Sega. Razor's office making an honest living. For sure. Like, I I can see it from both sides. I can see it from Sega, the conglomerate corporation side. And I can also see it from Razorsoft. You know, Razorsoft had very lofty ideals. You know, they wanted to, they felt like they could sell a bunch of copies. Sega was like, uh, you're playing with our money. <laughs> so, uh, you know, although I guess you could make the case that like Razorsoft was buying the proprietary carts from Sega. So Sega should have been cool with, you know, whatever. Just fucking take the money and run, you know? But they didn't. Uh, but don't worry, though. Technocop toys would be sold along Robocop and Sox. King Avenger toys, you new Toys R Us. <laughs> all right, guys. That's all we have on Technocop. Let's get back. Uh, well, let's get into the game, all right? You ready? Here we go. We're going to switch. One, two, three. There we go. Oh, God. Uh, my innards. All right, we'll go ahead. I'm going to lay out like I normally do for the intro, just to let the intro play. Bada bing. Did it go? Did it go? Yep, there it goes. All right. What the fuck is this?
Okay. All right. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right. The Sega Farts, they're in full effect right now. Sega Farts, we are farting it up, boys. Although it is it is a good bop. It's got a little bop to it. I do like the bop. It's legit. All right. I don't think we get an intro movie. I think that's... Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you hear that? Holy shit. We fucking drowned under a cascade of Yamaha there. Holy fuck. All right. <laughs> Techno Cop. Oh shit, we going right into it. All right, 15 minutes starts. All right, what? Uh, all right. Oh yeah, there we go. Didn't you fucking uh, play Skitchin? You should know better. Road rashers, get out of here. Oh shit. All right, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh look, we have a fucking, we have Waze. We have Waze on our dashboard here. All right, let's right, let's open up the throttle. Oh man, that timer is ticking down quick. Oh, and whoa, we're going 200 miles an hour. That's why. <laughs> it's like, oh, every every dad wants to beat the GPS. So you know, if you go 200 miles an hour, you'll get there way before Waze tells you you can fucking get there. Um, how's the sound, by the way, guys? I know this is not really like there's not really a lot of sound to be heard here. 223 miles an hour. That's where we top out. All right. Granny held hostage. Suspect extremely violent. Oh shit. Dead or alive. Pulling over now. What the fuck is that, dude? Why is he wearing a construction hat? I do like how you get out though, right? Okay, we're in it. We're in it. Oh god, I go oh, fuck! I shot a civilian right off the bat. <laughs> is there no music? Oh fuck. Did I oh oh it's my neck gun. Alright. We can switch guns. Is there no music? Do they seriously have no music in this game? Oh, shit. Yeah, no one under 12 should be playing this game. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Okay, can we go... Can we go in there? Can we go in? No? Uh, Dead or Alive rules? DOA? Okay. I respect it. Respect it. How you doing, mama? Just, just hanging out here in the hallway? Punk? Do you have a jump? No. Oh, oh. What the fuck was that? That was not... Do you guys see that crouch time? Like, how... Oh, God. All right. All right. I don't know. The suspect escaped as a result of officer injury. Oh, shit. What the fuck happened to that guy back here? This man caught an axe. Oh, okay. Crouching? That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. No, 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 no. That's right. Bring it down. Bring it down a notch. Do I not have a fucking jump? Did I run out of bullets? I think I did. Holy shit. Nine millimeter bullets with the power of attack. Have a helicopter bullet. Yeah, bro. Oh, all right. We are... Jesus. You have been killed. Game over. All right. That's it, guys. Technocop. It was wonderful. Oh, grunt. Oh, there is music. Why did they make it so silent? You have reached the rank of grunt. Why did they kick the music in here? <laughs> like now, like totally silent until that part. Oh, bro, we have to go through, we have to drive 230 miles an hour again. All right, all right, okay. I was just throwing for content, guys. I just, you know, I wanted you to uh, see see it suffer. Oh shit! On me, good lord! All right, all right. Techno cop, not doing it right now. I need I need more marijuana for this. Like I am far far too sober. I also made the mistake of throwing a bunch of caffeine on top of it. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's hit him. Let's hit him with manic six. With a bunch of caffeine. <laughs> you know, 
just uh, accentuate the chemical imbalance. Like, although I did, I did read a long time ago that like chemical imbalance is a nothing phrase invented by psychotherapists looking to um, sell bookings and medication. There's like, apparently there's no such thing as an actual chemical imbalance, um, which I believe, I believe. I, uh, we don't need to get into, you know, my personal beliefs about the, uh, is it Granny again? Yeah, Granny's held hostage. Okay, we gotta save Granny. We don't, we don't need to get into that. We'll, you know, we'll save that for the Israel and Palestine segment. That'll be later. Oh, fuck, I did it again! Oh, oh shit. Sorry, kid. Wrong place. Wrong time. Get the fuck out of here. I ain't having none of this this time. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. We're not gonna net gun. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Don't need to. Don't need to. Okay, that's my net gun. Oh, he does have a jump. Oh, that's not a quick one. Does that actually? Yo. Okay. Elevator. Naturally. Yeah, we'll go up. We'll hang out in the elevator. You know, uh, fire. This side up. Ha ha ha. It's upside down. Ha ha. They're so witty. Late 80s humor. All right. We got a. Whoa. That's a big ass rat. Holy fuck. Is this Chicago? Um, We got a minute. Damn, dude. That timer is going down. Holy fuck. They give you no time to save Granny. Oh, shit. It just whoops back. Okay. Granny, you got to be over here somewhere. Did we find her? No. No, oh, he hit me with the, a barrel of waste. The barrel of waste. All right, okay. Fuck off, none of that. Granny, where are you? Uh, blink, if you're in danger. Uh, okay, did I, did I find Granny? Is that Granny? Am I missing something here? Is he uh, throwing syringes at me? Why no music? <laughs> it's really... It's really kind of disturbing, to be honest with you. All you hear is footsteps. Alright. No, I guess Granny Parrot suspect located. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I should have looked at my fucking... Uh, my pit boy to realize suspect's been located, so... Is this him? All right, let's shoot him with the net gun. Let's see if that fucking works. <laughs> nope, never mind. <laughs> we ain't shooting him with shit. Okay. It's kind of a weird, a weird um, HUD, you know, just this arm on the bottom of the screen, taking up half of it. It's kind of. Kind of strange. It's a weird aesthetic choice, but oh god, uh, jump! Not, not exactly responsive. Like uh, this game looks bad. It is bad, brother. This is this is going to be the turd of the roster. I had high hopes because I. Are you Granny? Granny, you're looking fine. This is flashback, except shitty. It is. You are right on the money there, brother right on the money is that it are we done oh okay kid you walked it off smoke some menthols get yeah fuck off dead or alive does not rule i like dead or alive i'm cool with dead or alive i i mean especially the boobs i like the boobs you know i even played uh dead or alive extreme beach volleyball No irony there. <laughs> like, I actually enjoyed it. Like, you will say that because CS will ban you if you say you just like it. <laughs> I, I'm not, uh, I'm not shackled to them. I do whatever I want. I'm a free agent. For whatever reason, they made me admin over there. It's like, that was not the right choice. <laughs> it's like, guys, seriously. <laughs> That was back when Joey was actually a part of CS. Joey's no longer a part of CS anymore, guys. He abandoned it, just like all of his children. He's the original abandoned dad. 
Um, somehow now I have the copyright uh, uh, ownership to Cerulean Skies. It's weird. It's weird how that worked. Uh, Soul sold it to me. I own it now. Dead or alive, pull it over. I'm still blind to all things in CS. <laughs> all right, what do we got going on here? Uh, Dave Rock. Wait, is it? Did it say Mass? Mass. What the fuck is it? Oh God! Oh, that fucking punk! Did you see that little shit? All right. Yeah, bro, you brought a fucking gun or a knife to a gunfight. What is wrong with you? You should have known better. Oh God! Oh, all right. Do I have infinite bullets? Uh, nope, sure don't. Sure do not. All right. Kind of sucks that all we get is the net gun. There you go, which makes a weird slur. Hey, Granny! Where the fuck were you? Ah, oh, can't, can't fucking net up Granny. Take her to the, the fisherman's wharf. <laughs> oh, God fucking prick i don't even know where my life bar is oh is it the red squares underneath the stop or arrest thief okay can we go yeah let's go in there all right here we go here we go oh god i don't have any bullets oh fuck oh man we took it to the dome it was a little a little kind of sucks that he doesn't have anything else other than gun or net can't even pistol whip these fuckers. Oh, I stepped on something. Oh, shit. We got Joe Bluth. Fuck. Promotion denied current rank gun. What? Oh, shit. It's even hotter granny here. Oh, will you take this hand? <laughs> nice forearm loser. Uh, oh, well, uh, don't want to get too fresh here. Uh, let me. Can we get some knee action? There we go. I like a good knee. <laughs> okay, right on. I mean, the ladies look good, I guess. <laughs> oh, net, six of Guilfoy. <laughs> yeah, you know it. All grannies. Uh, the, checking out every crooked, uh, every crook. I fucked up the joke. <laughs> oh... There we go. Yeah. Look at that dump truck there. <laughs> oh, God. It looks like she's got three feet. What's going on with her feet animation here? I mean, you could tell right away. Like, this this reeks of late 80s DOS games all day long. It, it has the aesthetic. It has... Oh, God. Been killed. Game over. <sighs> Fuck. We still got two and a half minutes, guys. Oh, Techno Cop, that's what he said. Frank would love a chick with three feet. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I wish they didn't make you go through all of this every single time you died. That's that's a little egregious. That's a little that's a little pain in the ass. I don't like it. I don't like it. I wish you could do a little bit more with the motorist here. Get the fuck out of my way. Is there a life bar? Is the big red bar underneath? Is that my life bar? Hold on, let's break check this motherfucker. No, okay. No, he disappeared. As soon as he gets off the screen. Oh, what? Are you serious? Road Rasher made me move? Look at that. Look at that. This guy should be puking his spleen off screen. But no. Mm-mm. That ass got power. Oh, God. This is... Why did it, like... It seemed like every late 80s Sega game always had something that looked like OutRun. Like, they they figured out... Was OutRun before this or after this? If it was before this, they were just like, oh. Well, I guess Punk Development really did it. Nah, well... All right, hold on. Yep. Yeah. Let's, let's net this kid. Oh, fuck. We can't... Can't cry. Look, what is the point of this? Seriously. 
Other than to uh, propose, will you take this hand? There's no way they created that run style. <laughs> I don't know, Vicer. You can tell. A company like this, only the best. Only the best. Here, let's suspect locate. He fucking did it again! <sighs> wow, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry I made you watch this. <laughs> we got 15 seconds. It, it'll all be over soon. Oh, Lord. I mean, that's cool. I like that part. The gore. I love it. Like, I expected worse. I don't know, man. This is... Okay, thank God. Thank God, guys. Thank God. On the birthday, we get the birthday turd. There it is. Whip me, daddy. Uh, what game am I playing next? Okay, there we go. Put that down there. Put that thing there. Go back to Sega Talk. Sega Talk. I'm old enough to know better than you. Yeah, to be optimistic. <laughs> True that. Okay. Technocop. Criteria 1. For the 15 minutes in which I played this game, was I entertained? No. <laughs> no. Not at all. It was terrible. It's no good. It's no good. As far as I could tell, I mean, I literally couldn't get... I mean, technically, I got to the second stage. But no, no. I mean, I was entertained by how tragically bad it was, but that's not really the same kind of entertainment. But I don't know. I guess it's, just, I guess it's all kind of entertainment, you know? Mm, who knows? Who cares? Um, criteria 2. Now that I played this game, does my memory core of this game exist outside the lens of nostalgia? No, it does not. Should have never revisited. It's all virused up. That memory core is marred, perverted. Just damn. That box art just led us down the wrong path. I even like the font. I even like the font, what they got going on there. I don't understand. I still don't even understand the techno part other than him having a fucking power glove on his fucking arm. What's the what's the techno part? Is it just that? He's got the, the NES power glove. He's got the power. That's it. I don't know. We'll never know. Sadly, we lack the technology to find out. So moving on to the next one. Here he is. Joe Montana. Joe Montana football. Does this box art execute? Okay, I have an argument here. I have a two-sided argument here. Me, personally, my opinion, no, it does not execute. I think they could have done a lot more with Joe Montana if he was such a big-name star. They could have... He looks like he's about to pelt an old man. No! <laughs> Just like the Simpsons. The old man gets it in the balls. Meow. Um, me personally, my personal opinion, I think they could have done more. It's very... I mean, this is what... No, this is 91. 91. I was going to say, they don't have the excuse of early or late 80s. So... I know Sega were kind of going for like a minimalistic kind of like look to their box arts, which I appreciate. And we will get to one box art that has that look and it fucking nails it. It does really, really well. But me personally, my personal opinion, I don't think this box art executes. Now, Business 6, this box art does execute because you're looking early 90s, late 80s. Uh, everybody knew, everybody who played football or watched football, not me, I don't like fucking football, um, knew who Joe Montana was. And name recognition, you slap this big dopey guy up there and put him on the front of a box, yeah, you're going to sell copies. You're going to put numbers on the board. Um, so Business 6, I think it's a smart choice. I think it's kind of lazy but i think it probably was effective when like, people probably did pick it up because they were like hey joe montana i love joe montana san francisco go team but anyways nope does not execute at all uh looks like a biography book cover 
looks like a commercial dad playing football. It does. He does. He does have the the finest of newly hatched baby bird f- fucking hair going on there. So, mm. all right, on to our next segment. We're gonna check out a commercial real quick. Uh, let's take a commercial break and go to here and go to here and then there. quarterbacking another super game this season. Joe Montana football for Sega Genesis. Since I don't like being rushed, we're taking extra time to perfect my game. It'll be ready by the Super Bowl. So don't pass this up. It may be my best game of the season. <laughs> Okie dokie. Take that away. Come back. All right. <laughs> All right, that was some cheesy shit. <laughs> You can tell Joe was fucking mailing that in. <laughs> like, we can only see half the screen, by the way. Uh oh. Oh, when I go to commercial, like the promotions, or promotions, the, the, uh, fuck. Hold on. Let me figure this out. We'll do some live on air. Only see half the screen, by the way. Uh, let me come over here. Uh, all right. Uh, let's do. Oh, maybe why? Hold on, guys. Hold on. Montana was covering Montana. Oh shit! Ah, oh, thanks for pointing that out. I appreciate that. I have to get rid of this. I think first, and then. All right. Hold on. Let's try it again real quick. Yeah, this is a work in progress, guys. Work in progress. So you know, uh, bear with me here. Bear with me. I'm not gonna play the whole thing. I just want you to tell me. Blah, 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 blah. Genesis does. Yep. Joe Montana himself was fucking doing some code monkeying. All right. Get rid of that. Come back here. Uh, don't let that fucking go to autoplay. Bada bing. Bada bing. Yeah, the box art. Oh, okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Thanks for thanks for giving me the heads up there. I, on a whim, decided, yeah, let's do some fucking video game commercials. Yeah, we, okay, fantastic. We figured it out, guys. We got to the bottom of it. Thanks for giving me the heads up, Amanda. I appreciate that. I, I was hoping that Vicer would point it out to me, but I knew better. <laughs> Vicer's like, I want to see this man <laughs> struggle, <laughs> writhe. He's, he's, the, Vicer is the founder of Six and Two Thirds here. I don't know if you guys knew that. He's my, he's my chat chad. So... Okie doke. So that was Joe Montana. There he is. He was personally writing all the code for this. Um, And we do have a segue to that, actually. Uh, I'll get to it. Trivia. Bada bing. Joe Montana's football. This game. Touched down. (laughs) For the Genesis. In January of 91. It was developed by Park Place Productions, a mega conglomerate of indie rep. I don't know what I wrote there. Indie rep? Dev? I don't know. Indie something. Indie developers in the early 90s with 130 developers making 45 games for 14 different publishers. That is a stout resume. Very stout. Uh, Sega published Joe Montana's football themselves. Joe Montana football was Sega's first attempt at a sports game on the Genesis. Joe Montana's likeness was paid, but Sega didn't want to pay the NFL's exorbitant, exorbitant rate. NFL had some fucking costly rates to use all the teams. So Joe Montana is the only named player and the teams are just named after their cities. We got, we got Joey footballs. We don't need anybody else. (laughs) The game is loosely based on the 1989 NFL season. Uh, Sega signed with Joe Montana before they even had a game to show him. They talked this man into the bedroom on just a song. Um, Although some people on the internet say that Joe Montana himself had input 
in the game's design. So maybe not just an easy check, a paycheck from Montana. Maybe Joe was actually doing some code monkeying. He wasn't. But maybe he did actually have some personal input. You know, I don't fucking know. I wasn't there. Well, technically, I was there chronologically, but not uh, personally on site. Uh, Joe Montana and Madden were made by the same company, but Sega approached Electronic Arts president Trip Hawkins, suggesting that EA cancel the upcoming Genesis Madden in order to work on Joe Montana. Trip Hawkins agreed to help Sega, but wasn't about to cancel his own shit, so he worked both projects, but also worked Sega because he <laughs> intentionally coded Joe Montana to be a worse version of Madden, removing the 3D playing field view and reducing the amount of offensive and defensive plays from 113 to 100. Most of the deliberate downgrading occurred after the company had already completed the game. Uh, Joe Montana missed the Christmas uh, deadline, leaving Madden to solely vacuum up all of the holiday riches for the football fans of 1990. <laughs> so that's some shit, y'all. I mean, I knew about Trip Hawkins, but I didn't know he like purposely, intentionally made Joe Montana shitty. I didn't know that. Me and my brother, me and Judgmental Beef, who, if you come here tomorrow morning at 8.30-ish, you will see me and Beef. Well, you'll see me. You'll hear Beef. Um, we played the fuck out of Joe Montana. I don't even like football. Not even a fan of football. And I played the shit out of Joe Montana. The ketchup with chat. This reminds me of Gearbox with Aliens, Colonial Marines. I do not know the backstory of Gearbox um, with Aliens, Colonial Marines. Uh, Knox, give me the summary. Give me the rundown in nine words or less. <laughs> okay. That's Joe Montana. Let's get to the game. Let's start playing us a game here. Go to the Sega and then come back up here to this. And there it is. And I'm going to lay out like I normally do. Wow. Look at this. They're doing overlays like I do overlays. <laughs> like, just over everything that you're supposed to see. All right, I guess there is no demo. Looks great. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, San Francisco, a top-notch team. So you want to take on, or take on my teammates and me? Well, you will have to throw the ball deep to beat us and shut me down in the fourth quarter. Okay, what is he talking on? What is that? Uh, Gearbox used Sega money for Borderlands. <laughs> oh, 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 shit! <laughs> oh, God. That's hilarious, man. Oh, Gearbox. They, they work the fuck out of Sega. It seems like everybody works the fuck. Look, I love Sega. I am an unabashed Sega apologist. I'm not really a Sega apologist because I can recognize that they fuck up like all the time. Um, oh shit. I don't get to choose my team? Hold on, am I the 49ers? Okay, yeah, we are. Okay, good. I wanna be San Francisco. Oh, that's how you do it, guys. Right there. <laughs> Football. Football, oh, I didn't know what I did. Football. I forgot to do my, uh... oh, there it is. There you go. <laughs> I'm pressing the wrong button, obviously. Okay. All right. Hold on. I'll press a different button. What does that do? Oh, okay. <laughs> We're doing it one yard at a time, guys. All right. Let's see. We got another. Okay. Well, we passed the ball. All right. We're on our way, guys. Ah, oh, they can't get this. 
They can't get this. None of this. I'm a pro. Oh, look at that. It's a, uh, what, 60 yards? Bam. There's a lot of details on my mini. It's been forever, but that's the gist. I believe it. I believe it. I I kind of I kind of like it though. <laughs> like I, I love when any small uh oh shit, hold on. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh shit, yeah. Look at this. Oh, out of bounds. Okay, that's fine. We're we're close. We're close. Okay, hold on. Is there What's Joe's play? Oh, that's not that doesn't work. Okay. All right, there we go. Pass off. No, God damn it. I lost yards. Definitely lost yards there. Okay, Joe's play is the bootleg. Which button is B? It's not that button. All right, that button's B. Nice fall. <laughs> All right, this game. Oh, right up the middle. Right off. Oh, fuck. Like, this game doesn't look like much, and it's not. <laughs> but, holy shit. Me and Beef played the fuck out of this game. Of course, he fucking annihilated my ass and like, oh God, you see that? Blew his ass out. He was trying to keep me out. Can't keep Joe out. All right, we're going for the kick. We're going for the field goal. Yeah, get fucked. That's good. There we go. Mm -hmm. You could hear, oh, just hear the deafening screams of the crowd. All right, hold on. What's we what button is A? Okay, that's A. All right, I'm fucking playing this on a uh, dual sense, so <laughs> fucking PS5 controllers. So I got no idea what any, anything's mapped to. I just let RetroArch do whatever it wants. I'm just like, all right, okay, okay, press start. That makes sense. Here we go. Here we go. All right, I'm gonna move over there. I don't, I don't know what that does. All right, we're ready. Punt. That sucked. <laughs> what the fuck was that? All right, I don't get the run no place. Uh, problem is that when Gearbox showed Aliens, it looked amazing, but what after it was utter shit. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that, I took him down. Fucking blitzed his ass. Much of uh, Aliens was developed by some third rate company. Ooh, you hate to see it. You hate to see it. Well, so Gearbox, was it malicious why they did it? Or were they just like, look, we, we know Borderlands, is that's gonna make us the real money, you know? We'll do whatever Sega wants us to do, but come on now, it's gonna be Borderlands. And then, you know, they were right, they were right. Okay, all right, here we go, here we go. No, God, no, get him, get him, boys, get him! What the fuck? All of you fired off the team, every single one of you. This man was carrying four of you to the fucking end zone. Jesus Christ. Lord. Okay. Okay, so that switches. All right, stay on this side. Oh, God, I fucked it up. Oh, get fucked. Get fucked. There we go. Gearbox was very shady on that. CEO uh, Randy Pitchfork. Is his last name actually Pitchfork? Made a bunch of lies about the game's development. Ooh. Okay, so they hoodwinked Sega. Like, really hoodwinked him. Like, just not even cool about it. Just out and out lied. Oh, Pitchford? I liked it better as Pitchfork. <laughs> I was like, oh, that man. He's got an unfortunate last name. So this is Joe Montana football, guys. <laughs> Are you... Are you as riveted as I am by it? Oh, not in my, not in my house. I just wanted a new Duke Nukem. True that? True that. Are, is Gearbox, did they make the new Duke Nukem? Uh, I say new, quote unquote. Oh yeah, fumble. Oh fuck. No, it wasn't a fumble, okay. Oh man, I'm gay so you can't say I play new Duke Nukem for the babes. Oh, okay, so they did. They did make the the new Duke Nukem. Oh shit, he's going for the field goal? That's fine. Take your fucking piddly ass points. Look at that. Three against my seven. The 49ers, nothing. Nothing. Watch this. We're going to take it all the way to touchdown right from here. Oh shit, I fumbled. Oh, recovered. Nice. Love it. Great play. That's right. Uh, let's see 
that's A, so this is B? Okay, that's B. Yeah, 2011 new. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly, Nox. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, God, press the wrong button, guys. I still haven't figured out which button is throw. I need to figure that part out. Where's throw? Bro, where's your throw? Stop jumping. I remember all of the torture involved with the new Duke Nukem. New, quote unquote. Like, look, I was ready for it. I wanted it. I played the fuck out of some Duke Nukem 3D. Like, oh no, I don't want to feel cool. No, hold on, guys. Hold on. Oh, I wanted to fake him out. Shit, that's a goddamn shitty kitten. Fire the kicker. Get him off my team. We're renovating this team. We're stripping it down to the bare bones. Does the water boy want to play? Let him play. He's probably doing better than anybody else right now. All right, get him. Get him, boys. Get him. Got his ass. Blitz them. Blitz. All right, we'll do Joe's play. Whatever the fuck Joe's play is. Hold on, guys. I'm, I'm fucking... Oh, I'm offside. Shit. Ref. What are you talking about? Um... I'm really focused on, on this game. This is... Who knew that Joe Montana's uh, football for the Sega Genesis 1991 could bring it out of me? Like... Look, I'm not a Madden fan. I've never liked Madden. I've played Madden twice, like the current iterations of Madden. It's so technical. It's boring as fuck. Give me NFL Blitz. Oh. Oh, I was like, oh, did uh, mass shooting somebody uh, die? <laughs> like, give me NFL Blitz any day of the week over Madden. I like arcadey shit. I don't like fucking games where I have to think. Uh, developmental Hell went through different studios, cancel and re up until Gearbox released it. It was not good. That's what I had heard is like, I mean, I had followed it. I was, because look, I want some Duke Nukem. Like I said, I fucking love Duke Nukem 3D. I, granted, it's it's a sophomore kind of juvenile game, but like, look, it was it was a different time, the '90s, you know. Like, it was for 11 year old edge lord like me. It was great. It was all I needed from fucking video games. Get him, boys! Get him! What the fuck? Don't let him through! Get his ass! <laughs> I'm more of an NBA Streets guy. I love Streets too. I was a fan of NBA Streets as well. Like, big fan. I mean, it doesn't compare to Looney Tunes basketball, but what does? All right, hold on. Hold on, guys. We're going to get him. We're going to get... Uh, not in my house. Man to man. Man to man. I saw Frank walk yesterday. He's like an 80-year-old man now. I shouldn't laugh, but it is... This man got crippled by a New Orleans pothole. It's like, holy shit. I never knew they were so dangerous. Ah, oh, sorry. Fuck. Offsides. God damn it. All right, get him. Get him. Get him, boys. Fuck. Jesus Christ. Other than that, Gearbox re-released Duke Nukem 3D and introduced Duke Nukem as a character in Bulletstorm. Yeah, they had to. They had to give us something after you know uh, Duke Nukem Forever. And it was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, and the funny thing about duke nukem forever is that i didn't i never played it i watched other people play it i watched streamers play it and i read about it um is that like it wasn't bad it was just so bland and mediocre it was just so okay that at best it was okay like there just wasn't especially after all the hype i mean granted after all the hype that it had and all the jokes and all the Daikatana shit, you know, the build up, nothing was gonna fucking satiate everybody. It just wasn't, it was not going to work like that. Oh, hold on. Okay, good. Sorry. I thought my fucking stream was flipping out. That's right. Long dive. Got it. Mm hmm. So nothing was gonna fucking satisfy any of them. Um, but when, by the time that it did release, all of the quote unquote, like first person mechanics had been around for fucking years and years and years and it didn't really bring anything to the table and it didn't really improve anything. So it was just like, okay, boke doke. After, after I heard that, like, you know, it was basically mediocre, I was like, at least if it was bad, it would have been remarkable, you know? Straight boys. 
It would have been good. It would have been something, but... Nay, nay. Hey, what's up, Axel? What's going on, brother? Haven't seen you in a minute, Axel. What have you been up to? What have you been doing over there in Deutschland? I'm over here with Joe Montana. Kicking it. We're fucking uh, putting numbers on the board. What is what is the point of this? I'm pressing every button here, guys. Do I have to wait until they are all done moving? Guess so. All that for that. Seriously? Fuck. I've been touching grass. Ah, oh, good for you, bro. How you been touching grass, Axel? Tell me about it. Uh, Duke Nukem had dope world design. Are we talking about uh, Duke Nukem 3D or are we talking about Duke Nukem Forever? Because Duke Nukem 3D definitely had dope uh, level design. I agree. Like, as a child or as a preteen, teenager, I was 3D. Very good. Okay. That's what I figured. I figured that's what you were talking about. Uh, I was just fucking around in the porno section, in the porno magazines, you know, checking out all the porno magazines. It was great. It was fucking fantastic. Uh, giving strippers. Oh! Fumbled that shit! Giving strippers a wadded up $100 bill. Show me some tassels. Some tassels on those, some Tetons, you know? It was great. It was great. Uh, very subtle. Very subtle references, you know? They had pigs as cops. <laughs> they were really, you know. No, oh, get him! They were really, you know, reinventing the wheel on that one. Um, but again, different time. That was, that was, that edginess, that was kind of, you know, the humor of the time. Like, it was something just blatant and gratuitous, you know? I loved it. I was a fan. I was a fan. The funniest thing is he got crippled like a week after his house got flooded. I know. I know if I should, that's the worst part. It's like, this man is like, he was like, fuck, my house got flooded. All my shit's fucking dead. Like, you know, uh, uh, fucking, and he's like, oh, I'm gonna go on a vacation. I'm gonna get away from all of this. And he goes away. He's like, I've always wanted to go to, uh, New Orleans. I've always wanted to go to Louisiana. And now I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go for it. And he goes, s takes one step out into the street, breaks his fucking leg. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. Goddamn prick. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what what voodoo shaman did you piss off, man? I was like, you saw the movie Thinner? Come on, man. Jesus Christ. I'm like, oh, you never fuck with Miss Cleo, you know? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I was helping out my mom and great-grandpa and just stepped away from there. Good for you. Good for you, Axel. It's a better life, to be honest with you. It's a better life. Like... There are times uh, uh, when, say, if I like, I go on a cruise, or for this last time when I went to Vegas, there are times where like I'm not connected to the internet for multiple days, and it's weird because at first, like the first 24 hours, it, you're not connected to the internet. You get this weird like anxiety. You're just like, ah, something's wrong. Something's not right. I'm like I feel like I feel like I'm disconnected from something. I feel like I'm missing out on something. But that goes away, and once that goes away, there's almost like a peace and a calm that comes over your mind. Um, I highly recommend it. If I could, I would disconnect completely and entirely. If I didn't have a business to run, I would... Uh, oh, God! I would go to a Nokia fucking 1200 series phone and just receive phone calls on it, and that's it. And just never get on the internet. The only time I would get on the internet is to... Oh, is to read Wikipedia or TV tropes. That'd be it. That's it. That's all I need the internet for. Get it, Joe. Throw it in there. Where the fuck were you? Where the fuck were you, unnamed player? None of y'all have names. How am I supposed to curse you out? There we go. Got it. Got it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. This is my house. My house. Fuck. There we go. Oh, the timer's going off. That's fine. I'm gonna make... Yeah, that's right. Great play. No, I didn't want a field goal. Can we switch it? No, oh, that's no good. Fuck that. That's no good. Okay. We got it. We, we understand what we're doing here. 
let's let's bring it back to second talk. Let me boot this up real quick and come back over here. What's the third game? Oh, the third game is Vicer's game. That's right. That's right. Chat's choice. Vicer is next. Okay, there we go. Let me let me catch up. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're right, Knox. You got it. On the money. Uh, Frank needs to find a god or something. The evil spirit saying. <laughs> Krishna always exists. Eight arms, best hugs. That's right. <laughs> the feeling of missing out is what fucks people up these days. Yeah, got to buy this game fast before I miss out 60 bucks. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's, I, I have gotten to the point though, especially with new games where I'm just like, guys, I can't keep up. <laughs> it's like, I can't keep up. I can't. I was like, I still have Stranger of Paradise, brand new, sealed in the fucking box. Have not opened it. I fucking, I want to play the new Final Fantasy, new Final Fantasy 16. I wanted to play it. Still haven't played it. Not knowing when the fuck I'm going to play it. I want to play Starfield, even though, I don't know. I can't keep up. There's no way. Like, I like to annoy my friends, especially my gamer friends, by telling them, they're like, guys, have you played the new God of War released three years ago? <laughs> it's so great. Like, games that they've already played and blazed through. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Oh, I agree, Knox. Patient gaming for the win. Yeah, because look, first of all, if you are a patient gamer, you don't get wrapped up in all the fucking hype that everybody's talking about bullshit with the game. You know, you don't get wrapped up in any of the discourse. You don't get wrapped up in any of the people shitting on games that, you know, that are good, but they got to find something minute and fucking nuanced to shit on. You don't get wrapped up in any of that. And then secondly, by the time you're ready to play, that game's already fucking 30 to $40 off. <laughs> so you're just like, well, ka-ching, fucking cash in. Or they released a Game of the Year version and they put all the DLC in there, you know? Good to go. It's like, who the fuck wants to buy shit the week of, you know? It's very rare for me, for me to, like, play a new game, like, the week it's released. The only exceptions so far for me was Diablo 4. Mistake? <laughs> that game. It was fun for a little while, but, man, I have not touched it. Um, Street Fighter 6, that was worthwhile, although I have not played it since months ago. And Baldur's Gate 3, I bought Baldur's Gate when it came out. That was a success. I'm 95 hours into it, still a fucking fun game, still love it. Super good. For me personally, probably my game of the year, but I only play like five video games a year. So, you know. Okay, criteria one. Hold on, Excel, I'll get back to you. I don't, I'm not ignoring you. Uh, criteria one for the 15 minutes in which I played this game. Was I entertained? Yes, actually. Like, is it the best football game ever made? No. Is it like a very solid, arcadey kind of pick up and play with friends football game? Yes, it is. You want to fucking throw the ball down the field? You can throw the ball down the field. If you want to tackle the player who has the ball, you can tackle him. That's it. That's all you need. Don't, I mean, even the the play screens, you know, the different technical plays, who cares? <laughs> like, I was literally just pressing buttons, you know? It was fine. It was fine. I was entertained. So, criteria number two. Now that I have played this game, does my memory of it exist outside the lens of nostalgia? Uh, yes. Also, yes. I believe that it's just as good. Like, I, I did not have any problem with it whatsoever. Like, I... I felt like it was exactly as I remember it. Like me uh, diving for no reason whatsoever. And then my brother just goes right up the middle. Fucking touchdowns on my ass. And then uh, stands up and then fucking like gives me the suck it, the gesture. And then I'm just like, oh, well, good. Good game, though. Not a turd. Not a turd. Also not a turd. Sonic Spinball. Let me catch up on chat. The only game I was looking forward to was Baldur's Gate 3, but I pre-ordered that. Holy shit, you pre-ordered it three years ago? Wow. I didn't know it was... I mean, I didn't really know. I didn't keep in touch with Baldur's Gate, so... Same with Cyberpunk, bought it three years ago. 
No shit. He was on the train. Uh, Exel said, I only played Final Fantasy 16 and Baldur's Gate 3 because my mom's a fan of it. Your mom's a fan of Baldur's Gate 3? Really? Exel? Is your mom hot? <laughs> Starfield will only be good two years from now. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Mm -hmm. I, I could tell right away when people were showing gameplay footage of Starfield that I was just like, I mean, yeah, it looks good, but it looks kind of bare bones. It looks like they need to add some shit. Like, I don't know. Could just be me. Could just be me. Um, or you could have everyone praising our record when it deserves none. <laughs> I played D4 for 20 minutes before just installed and saw like... <laughs> D4. I don't know what it is, man. I mean, I do know what it is. They took a somewhat good idea, turned it really mindless, and then cranked up the mindlessness factor by making you grind ad infinity, you know? Like, it is... I understand Diablo, all Diablo games are a grind. That's that's included. It's, it's baked into the casserole. But... The way in which they employed the grind, bleh, not so good, not so good, not so good. I mean, season two is like coming out in a couple of weeks and like there's literally nothing inside of me that wants to play that game. Nothing. And I look, I dropped like 70 hours into it. Like that's something. But now I'm just like, meh, 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 meh. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, luckily, Guilty Gear stays consistent, undisputed somehow as a community. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 1 definitely. Old. Bruh, I have a gamer family. Oh, you have a gamer family? Really? Y'all are into the gamers? And nobody actually sat you down and taught you how to play fighting games? The us reprobates at Cerulean Skies and the Super RPG friends, we had to teach you how to fighting game? Your family were not to be relied on. Jesus. Terrible. Terrible. But is your mom hot? <laughs> oh, you did answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> also, in my opinion, for almost being 40, she looks pretty good. Okay. Okay. Wait, she's... You said for almost being 40? God, Axel, you're so young. You're such a baby. Like, oh, God. Uh, Axel, post a picture of your mom in Discord. All right. It's for research. Starfield is a game for people who believe video games peak with Fallout 3. Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I could definitely see that, Knox. For sure. I mean, these, uh, I said it in other streams. Like, they were, they were just like, have you guys ever seen such, like, true-to-life interactive living areas? And I was just like, bro, 20 years ago, Deus Ex had that on the fucking PS2. I was like, are you serious right now? Like... I mean, yeah, it's great to go into somebody's living quarters and pick up their books and their journal that they wrote in. And, oh, look, they have a TV and a little nook. Whoa, captivating. <laughs> so, you know, whatever. Whatever. Fallout 4 looked way too fucking clean. Yep. Yep. I was kind of disappointed in Fallout 4, to be honest with you. I played a lot of Fallout 4. I never beat the campaign. Um, I did not like how they shoved the whole building aspect down my throat. I was just like, guys, I understand this is big. Minecraft's big right now. People love Minecraft. I get that's where I'm guessing that's where you're getting this from. But like, I don't, this isn't for me, guys. I don't even like making a creative character. I spend like maybe five minutes making my creative character avatar. That's it. No, mm -mm. it's not for me. I did like the characters in Fallout 4, though, or some of the characters like the private, the private eye, the dick, the private dick guy. I can't remember his name. That guy was cool. I actually really like that guy a lot. No, oh, Frankie's in a pizzeria out here looking for Vicer's pizza people. Give me a white Sicilian with extra pepperoni. I have the truest white Sicilian. <laughs> Ah, oh, Axel, you're not going to post your mom? Bro. Bro. You got to hang on with the mom. That's not cool. You can't tell us about your mom, who's probably the same age as me. Today. Especially today, being my birthday. That's unfortunate. On my birthday, Axel, you do this to me? Damn, bro. Damn. 
damn, people talk shit about my old man walk. <laughs> Frank got an icy for walk. Okay, I gotta stop, guys. We gotta. We're on to it. Here it is. Here it is. Happy B day, six six six. Thank you, thank you, Knox. I appreciate it, brother. Today is my actual birthday, the day in which I was hatched, um, brought into this world. I didn't want to be here. Nobody asked me if I wanted to fucking be born. I did not. There he is. Look at him, Goldie, my man, my wholesome boy. Goldie is great. I was talking to Chet Manley 405. I was hanging out with Chet in his chat during his Chrono Trigger stream. And he's like, guys, I don't have anybody to send the raid to. Chat, do you have any suggestions? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Goldie's streaming right now. Send it to Goldie. Goldie wants it. Give it to Goldie. And Chet's like, okay, guys, I'll send it to Goldie. And so he sent it to Goldie. Goldie's in there playing fucking Trails Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> so Chet fucking raids with like 14 people. They immediately see the Yu-Gi-Ohs. <laughs> All of them gone. <laughs> it's like, oh God, Goldie. I feel so bad for him. Although granted, I know the politics of raids. You get raided by someone and it feels great and maybe you'll keep one or two of them, maybe. But then within like three minutes, they all fuck off out of there, you know? That's fine. I understand. So, you know. But yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't blame anybody for it either. But I did find it hilarious. I was like, no, Goldie! Not Yu-Gi-Oh! You were supposed to be playing Toho! <laughs> it's like, shit! It's like, fuck. And then uh, Goldie's just unapologetic about it. He's just like, oh, they they were washing the windows because it's fucking trail. So it's like, oh, you got to read fucking 30 pages just to get to the next, you know, plot point. So anyways, anyways, sorry, <laughs> bro. If I won't even show my own face, I will give that same courtesy to all I know. Also, happy birthday. No, no, Axel. No, that's not how it works. I, look, I'm into German women. All right. I like German women. I do like German women, although they are very I've, I've talked about this with Excel before, but they are very blunt and direct. Like they will they will be like, no, you are wrong. <laughs> That's it. I distract streamers too much. I leave quick when it happens. <laughs> you need to get on VR with me. Tons of German six. I actually, to be honest with you, Vicer, I've been thinking about it more and more. I'm just like, I actually have a computer that could run VR pretty well now, I would think. I mean, it can run Sonic Spinball. All right. Hey, listen, if it was Sunday, we were doing the beach episode with Booba, so maybe that would have worked more. Maybe. Maybe. You keep doing what you're doing, Goldie. You fucking, you know better about streaming than I do. I don't fucking know anything about streaming. Look at me. I'm fucking sitting here with Sonic Spinball, just looking at a blank stat, not a blank, but a static fucking image. Sonic Spinball, does this box art execute does it do the things it is supposed to be doing fuck yes it does it does and this is why one you have character recognition sonic everybody knows sonic a lot of people know who dr robotnik is so you know you got that too but sonic right there on the front he's doing the spinny legs his legs are spinning he's going he's running so fast he, they've just become a circular fucking blur so right off the bat, you know who it is. You know what you're getting. You can see it. It's Sanic. All right. Executes. You have action. You have action with Robotnik fucking fist pumping his way onto the boardwalk. You know, Jersey Shore in it. Um, you have Sanic running in place over lava. Don't know how that works. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He's Sanic. And then you also have the pinball flipper flipping, which doesn't look like it's really doing anything, but that's fine. That's fine. You have action. You Does it encapsulate what the game is about? Yeah. They were kind of a little lazy on that. They just slapped in a pinball flipper. <laughs> they were like, now it's pinball. <laughs> that's it. That's all you need to know. That's it. Like, you're fine. You got it. Like... <laughs> so uh, uh, that part do i think it executes yes do i think it slaps yes i think it's actually a pretty good box art it's not a bad box art they could have done a little bit more it's a little uncreative in certain aspects but when we get to the notes you will understand why that is so 
Um, all right, there we go. All right, we're gonna take this off so we can turn the primary monitor back on and we'll take you to a commercial. Commercial break, commercial break. This is what it feels like. Ooh. It's Sonic, it's Pinball, it's a new Sonic's Pinball. It's a uh, faster. Sega! Sega Genesis and game cartridge sold separately. All right, there's that. Take it back over here, bring that away, and then bring Spinball back. There he is. Got it. Executed. Got it. Uh, good. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, legit good commercial. Uh, I agree with Knox. may give some people headaches. It is like the whole uh, pinball aspect is disorienting. Like even me when I was watching it and fucking researching for the commercials, I was just like, oh, God, this is a little sickening. But that's fine. <sighs> Speaking of sickening, outside of that, though, good commercial. Snazzy. Gets you in there. Gets you out. You know what you're looking for. Um, there it goes. Bada bing. Uh, all right. Oh, Lord. Uh, let's get to notes. We have a lot of notes for Sonic Spinball. Look at this shit. I write in all capitals because I can't fucking read my handwriting otherwise. <laughs> my own handwriting. So Sonic Spinball, a spinoff. In November of 93, Spinball here was developed by Sega Technical Institute, the ballers of Sega 90s. Uh, Kid Chameleon, Sonic 2, Sonic 3, Sonic and Uganda Knuckles, uh, Comic Zone, Die Hard Arcade, and even weird but cool shit like the ooze. You know? So, uh, STI, ballers, in my opinion. Ballers. Um... Published by Sega, Obvi. Uh, Spinball was cooked up by the American branch of STI as the Japan team were working uh, Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles simultaneously, both at the same time. Um, here's the most... Here you go, Vicer. Uh, STI does sound bad. It does, yeah. <laughs> this is what I was talking about uh, earlier on Twitter, Vicer, when I was saying, like, Sega's doing the most Sega shit imaginable. Okay, so management realized that Christmas season of 93 would see them just holding their pecker. I just wanted to get the word pecker into a stream. Uh, holding their pecker for holiday shoppers because they were working on Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles and they weren't ready yet. Um, so they commissioned Team USA to shit out anything resembling Sonic for us Slackjaw fans. So they made Sonic Spinball, developed it, beginning conception to completion two months they made this game in two fucking months which is god damn that is breakneck speed for even for regular 16-bit sega genesis shit holy god um so no matter what like no matter how shitty this game is which i don't think it actually is shitty i think it's pretty good if i remember it correctly um that's a victory like bro that's some homebrew fucking uh, Halloween hack shit, you know? Like, Jesus. Okay. So, holiday season of 92, when Sonic 2 dropped, uh, it pushed console sales in a noteworthy way, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so, STI were listening to fans and storing data in the brain banks. They, they knew. Uh, their research found that the focus groups unilaterally felt that the casino aspects... The casino little, the casino stages of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2. Was there a casino? Yeah, there was a casino stage. The casino aspects of Sonic 1 and Sonic 2 were their favorite parts, hands down, like across the board, big time, big lead. And so the slot machine aspects gave birth to pinch hitter pinball, as you see here. In standard Sega fashion, Sega were in the initial stages of shipping copies of Spinball, and then the team were informed that Sega kind of, maybe, technically, definitely didn't own the rights to the Sonic theme tune. 
<laughs> the theme tune is owned by Japanese band Dreams Come True, whose member Masato Nakamura composed Sanic 1 and 2. So STI tasked their lead composer to write a new theme within two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Sega, you know? Like, I love Sega. I do. Like, I love Sega's vision. I love Sega's, like, they're willing to take risks. Or they were. I don't know about nowadays. Well, you know, Sonic 06, but that's fine. Um, but, God, man, some of their execution is just fucking laughable. Um, Spinball, Sonic Spinball here sold well, although critically hot and cold. The critics were kind of hot and cold on it. Um, they, Some people were just like, oh, it, it doesn't play well for a pinball game, but it's just like, it's fucking, it was developed in two months. What do you people want? <laughs> like, fuck. Retrospectively, people take it apart because it was so trendy for a time being to clown on Sonic. People go back and shit all over Sonic Spinball because Sonic went through a period there. Like, look, we all go through that phase, you know, where things are weird. It's kind of awkward. You get boners all the time. Sonic went through a phase where everything he touched was garbage. <laughs> like, just bleh, bleh, everything. But, like I said, I I love Sonic. I'm an unapologetic Sonic fan. Even the shitty stuff. I even like the shitty stuff. Like, And, and then, once I realized that Sonic was used as a way to troll other people on the internet, I was like, oh, there's my guy. <laughs> I was like, there he is. There he is. <laughs> So I have one supplementary uh, material for Sonic Spinball here. Um, just to give you an idea that Japanese developers and the Japanese gamers are way more hardcore than U.S. And I don't know, USA were worried about the like, oh, the children, the children. This is an example of the game being paused in the U.S. version. Game paused, right? Okay. Uh, the Japanese version... Yo, move it, which is more on point for Sonic's character and just, you know, in general, like good flavor, good flavor, you know, like, yeah, keep moving, keep moving. Like, but no, no, the the children gamers of the USA, they couldn't handle that. That's too much for them, too much for them. All right, uh, let me bring up that and then come back to let's switch over to the Segas and let's do some spinball. Hold on, guys, I gotta get a drink. Yo, that fucks. I think that was great. Good opening. Snazzy. Oh, I didn't I didn't pay attention to whether or not the theme, the tune was different. All right, let's get in this. Oh yeah, definitely different. <laughs> okay. Well, that was they had 2 hours, you know. What what could I make in two fucking hours, you know? Oh god, the Sega farts, bro. They are hurting me. Let's do let's do fast. No, let's do normal. That's all you got, normal and fast. Okay. All right. I don't know why we need options. There we go. Let's let's begin. Ah, oh, this song fucks too. Yeah. All right, let's put 15 minutes on the clock. Oh, he's already getting impatient with us. All right, we're in it. All right, that's jump. Okay, it's all jump. 
Nice. Love it. Launching up. All right. Love it. Love it. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it on stream before. I am a huge pinball fan. Gigantic pinball fan. Love pinball. I don't really like pinball on consoles, home console systems, uh, because I don't know, there's just, maybe it's just like the, 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 I want to say ki kinetic. Is that the right word? I don't know if I'm using the right word. There's just some uh, aspect of feedback that just doesn't feel right when you play it on a console. But I, I do fuck with pinball games on a console, though, all day long. But I prefer, you know, the uh, pinball coin-op. Oh, Sanic. Oh, Lord. Birthday boy, that's me. I'm the birthday boy. The best. The one. The only. Toxic Caves. Um, and I would say like my love for pinball came from, I got a rich great uncle. My great uncle is rich. He was a dentist in the seventies and he fucking charged the shit out of people and made millions. And he had a stand, uh, standalone coin op pinball machine in his game room, which had a pool table and some other shit in there. And I would go in there and he'd put it on free play and you wouldn't see me for, oh, fuck yeah, Sonic. Hell, oh shit. You wouldn't see me for hours. For hours, safety lids are open. And ever since then, I've been a huge fucking pinball fan. If there is a pinball machine at an establishment that I am at and I got some dollars to spend, I will sit there and fucking plop down and play some fucking pinball. Love it. I wanted, I wanted to have my my own pinball machine, uh, my own uh, arcade pinball machine, but and I was thinking about getting one. However, two things. One, they are fucking expensive. Holy shit! Like even the cheap ones, like just a cheap one. You're looking at oh god damn. Oh Sonic, yeah. Oh wait, I want to see what happens when he fucking. All right, hold on. The buttons! Hold on, I wanna see Sonic die. Oh! Brutal. Brutal. That thing's also pretty scary, to be honest with you. That's, that thing's fucking gnarly. Um, uh, yeah, so they're mega expensive. Like, even cheap ones were like three or four K. Um, and then the second reason why I don't own one, I probably will at some point in time, is the maintenance on those fuckers are, first of all, it's really, it can be really expensive to maintain and preserve them. And I'm just like, guys, this is a lot of fucking work. The bumpers, the flippers, I guess you don't really have to replace the balls very much because it's just fucking stainless steel, perfect spheroid ball. So, you know, uh, I don't know, man. That's, that's a lot of work. <laughs> it's just like, I just want to play pitball. That's it. I don't want to have to fucking, you know, sewer dragon. That's me. <laughs> Reporting live. Actually, that would be, that would be a uh, stench. Stench would be the sewer dragon. Oh, man. So far, this fuck's pretty good. Like, draining the slime. I love, I especially love pinball um, games that have a stage aesthetic to go with them. Like, big fan of that. Big fan of that. I love it. Uh, the only criticism I would have for this, and I read it in the notes, I didn't put it into the notes. Um, I think it was this game. Uh, you can see the movement is a little choppy. It's it's a little slow for your normal, and even outside of the speed of the pinball, it's it's got a weird kind of wonk to it. Ah, fuck. Um, but I think, I could be wrong, I think it's because they, they normally coded, oh god, the Sega farts are so loud though. They normally coded an assembly, but to uh, increase speed, because they only fucking had two months, you know, they they coded it in uh, C. I think it was C. I could be mixing up my facts. I could be thinking about ghouls and ghosts. I can't remember. So it's, you know, and that a lot of the, the video game magazines of the time, they were shitting on it for that exact reason. Whether they knew or not that the game only had a two month fucking dev time, 
you know, it was like, when was Sonic came out? I can't remember. 93, I said? Early, uh, early games journalists, they were all edge lords. They were all just fucking shitting on stuff to shit on it, really. And I go back and I, like, when I'm doing the notes, I read some of those reviews, like, because they'll have, like, PDFs on fucking Wikipedia. And I'm like, yeah, I'll check out those PDFs. And, which is great, by the way. Like, if you ever want to fucking take a blast in the past, go check out the PDF fucking citations on Wikipedia and go read shitty ass electronic gamely mufflies from fucking 1992. Oh, Lord. Terrible. Terrible. Get it, go cart instead. <laughs> I agree, man. Go kart's the way to go. Oh, oh shit. Ah, very good. I love when pinball, uh, pinball machines give you. Nope, not that time though. Uh, they give you like the extra chance when you go down the uh, far lane. Loop de force. Early game journalist shit on every. Yep, on every From Software game. Oh yeah, they did. Oh yeah, they did. Uh, definitely. Some of that was deserved, though. <laughs> some of the... Uh, some early From Software games. A little questionable. A little questionable. I've never played any of the old From Software games. Um, the first From Software game I ever played was... It wasn't Dark Souls. It was, uh, it was a game before Dark Souls. I can't remember. Anyways, yeah, they ship on them. Bad, bad, bad. Oh, whoa! Fresh meat. Whoa! Cerulean Skies enters with the blood loss of three men. Thank you, CS. Who's who's doing it? Who was streaming? Was it uh, Mr. Heeks? Or was it Goldie? Who was streaming over on CS? Um, by the way, in case you guys didn't know... Um, oh, Armor Core. That's what it was. God, why couldn't I remember fucking Armor Core? Uh, we're just going to keep doing the same move over and over, guys. That's how you do it. That's how real pinball masters do it. Ah, it was Hiko, Mr. Heeks. How we doing, Hiko? What's going on with What were you playing over there? Oh, that's right, you guys were playing Symphony of the Night. Ah, oh, son of a bitch, man. I kind of wanted to see you guys end it, but... You know. You know, I'm over here doing birthday shit. Uh, playing the uh, Sanic. Some Sanic spin balls. Oh, God. Oh, at least, uh, like... All right, look. I'll give it its flowers. Like, they do not want you to die. Like, they give you every option to keep it going, which I can appreciate because when you got a, a, a dodo dum-dum like me, <laughs> yeah, worm bag, bag that worm. Uh, you need all the help you can get when you're dodo dum-dum. Um, also, in case you get, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm actually, in certain aspects, you are influencing Sonic's trajectory. You're moving him. Oh, shit, what do we got here? Go for the cart. Yeah, go for the cart. All right. Oh, that was the wrong one. That was the wrong one. <laughs> Kingsfield rocks. <laughs> they knew about game development as much as the kid next door whose uncle works it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're correct, Knox. They were just shitting on things. They were kind of like being the internet wrestling community. You know, they knew a few things, a few insider terms and a few insider practices. And they were just like, oh, we know about games. I don't know, man. It's it's hard because like sometimes I can have a really strong opinion about video games and, you know, not give them uh, context uh, and just eviscerate. But I don't know, man. I just like, I don't know. Game journalism itself is fucking... I'd like to say it got better, but it really kind of didn't. Uh, the only thing that happened with games journalism is everybody became a journalist. <laughs> so, so yeah, I guess the field did get really, really bad. Like, everybody and their mother fucking can report on video games now, which is cool. Like, look, I, I'm a big fan of everybody having an opinion. Look at me, you know, Jesus. Like, I have all of the opinions and uh, not a lot of them structurally sound by any means. <laughs> like, oh god. Nice, we're back. Yeah, let's drain that slime. That's right, baby. How's my video day going? Any plans tonight? Uh, birthday is. Birthday is actually. Okay. If you put it out on paper, 
If you put my birthday out on paper, if you write it all down on paper, my birthday sucks. <laughs> because today I found out that my father's uh, partner, my father's uh, lover, uh, his husband, um, uh, one of the men who helped raise me as a teenager. I was raised by two sassy gay men, which if you ever read my Twitter, uh, it shows. Um, <laughs> Uh, I found out today that uh, he has confirmed cancer. Uh, he has confirmed lymph node cancer. And not only is it confirmed lymph node cancer, but it, it has also, it's metastatic. It's traveling, it's spreading all throughout his body. He's got a spot on his liver. He's got a spot on his lungs. He's got a spot on his throat. So that kind of sucks. Um, <laughs> and then on top of all that, I had to go to work. Uh, Mother Nature is doing weird things right now in Florida because Monday and Tuesday was a beautiful days to fucking be clean. Ooh, barrel busted. Beautiful days to be cleaning pools. It was fucking like, oh shit. Oh, whoa. Look at this. Just like a hobo. I like that though. That's super cool. I like that touch. Um, Mother Nature can't make up its mind. Uh, the highs were like in the mid 70s on Monday and Tuesday and then Wednesday, Thursday and today, uh, for whatever reason, went back up to 92 degrees with 100 percent humidity. Feels like you're working outside inside of an actual cheesecake. Oh, we cleaned up. Oh, we're environmentally uh, conscious. Feels like you're working inside of an actual cheesecake and um the feels like temperature was 113 degrees outside today it was fucking ridiculous i was sweating my balls off and then uh all day long excited to stream excited to you know get on here and party down with you guys and uh, i was like you know what i haven't checked my apartment mail in weeks because i don't check my mail it's nothing there's nothing ever good in there ever unless they're sending me magic cards i don't need to know anything that's going in there fuck it I went to check my apartment mail, and then there's a letter from my landlord in there, and I was like, oh no! <laughs> it's like, oh god, I'm gonna get kicked out! And then I was just like, I opened it up, and I, I'm not getting kicked out of my apartment, he is raising my rent. <laughs> it's like, fuck! But, he's raising my rent to, um, 1650, which sucks. Not great, but guess what? For my area in Florida, that is actually the cheapest going around, right? So uh, there's a part of me that's just kind of like, ah, oh, shit, hell yeah, we got a Chaos Emerald. There's a part of me that's just like, oh, okay, I'll take it. It's still cheaper than everywhere else right now. So when you put that on paper, birthday sucks. Sucks, not that great. But to be honest with you, my mood, my demeanor, I'm in a good mood. Like I had, you know, uh, like my, I was kind of unaffected. You know, I had some friends uh, call me and text me and message me and discord me and all that shit and saying happy birthday and all this shit. Just support, you know, just people letting you know that they actually fucking care about you. And that makes a big difference, you know, because like, I don't know, man, sometime in my adult years, I started to get depressed about birthdays. Not necessarily because like, oh, I'm getting old, because like no matter how old I get, I always feel like I'm eternally 16 years old in my brain. I don't, I never feel like a true, fully fleshed out fucking adult. So, you know, um, but there's this weird depression that kind of lurks whenever I have a birthday because it's like, it's like you have expectations, but they're, they're not, totally defined they're not totally clear what your expectations are but your brain has some sort of expectations about your birthday and then you know your actual birthday happens as an adult and they you're you're they never they never check out you know the expectations that you have they never clear like and so and i think some of that oh shit all right cool we made it to the next level um i think some of that comes from like childhood i think kids are fucked up by parents making a huge fucking deal about their birthday because i think that shit stays with you the rest of your life and then you know you you feel like every birthday that you have as an adult needs to be a certain level of excellence and magnificence and and it's, it's just not you know like some days are some days are great birthdays as an adult but other most of the time it's just like you know you're just doing normal adult shit so it's like you know so so on paper birthday looks like a shit show but me personally i'm like Meh, fuck yeah <laughs> it's like oh, i don't have cancer <laughs> so not that i know of you know like could i i might 
who the fuck knows? All right, 15 minutes are going up. All right, let's cancel. All right, let's take it back. Let's take it back, Sega Talk, there it is. And I don't know, man, it's like, you're alive, all right? <laughs> so there's two ways you can look at it. You can be like, oh, I'm fucking, bleh, I'm alive and I have to go through this shit, which, you know, it's defeatist. And guess what? Even if you have that mood and that mentality, you still got to wake up the next day. <laughs> so it's just like, I, I kind of like look at things from the viewpoint of every day is a random adventure. And sometimes like absolutely nothing happens. And then some days everything happens out of nowhere. And you're just like, Whoa! <laughs> like even the weird bad shit that's like unfortunate that would get people down and get people frustrated. I'm just like, man, can't wait to get on the other side of this. So I have a story to tell. So I don't know. That's just my opinion though. Your mileage may vary. That's my attitude about things. So I don't know. There's, there's a lot worse shit in the world. I could be over on the Gaza Strip getting fucking torpedoed to hell and back, you know? Instead, I'm here hanging out with you cool cats playing Sonic Spinball. Life ain't that bad. <laughs> so, like, anyways, criteria one for the 15 minutes in which I played this game, was I entertained? Yes, I was entertained. I was so entertained that not only was I watching the screen, but I was completely ignoring Chad because I was like, oh, fuck yeah, man, we're getting some pinball in this. We're in it. And also I was like really into whatever the fuck I was talking about, which I have already forgot about. So <laughs> fucking, you know, but very entertained. I, I love pinball. I love Sonic match made in heaven match made in heaven. I kind of wish they would make a new Sonic spinball. I think that'd be super cool. Like because like, OK, look. Off the cuff, not off cuff, off the page, side video games, side IP. You know, you take Sonic here, the hedgehog, he's a platformer, and then you shove him into a pinball genre. As far as genres go, Sonic is a really good fit in pinball. Really good. It works because he's a circular ball half the time in his video games. So if you knock him around with a flipper, good. Works. Works. Like normally, not normally, but, you know, you often see uh, video games kind of like take a pivot into a weird genre. Like, OK, for instance, PlayStation one Magic the Gather uh, Gathering Battle Mage. Let's take a one V one fucking card game and turn it into a real time strategy game. <laughs> you know, it's just like mm. I feel like in that aspect, I feel like Sega hit it out of the park with this. Sega Spinball. So I was entertained. I don't know about y'all, but I was entertained. Criteria number two. Now that I played this game, does my memory of this game exist outside the lens of nostalgia? Yes. Also, yes. Um, I, I can see certain aspects of it nowadays with my current day shitty gamer vision. So I can be a little bit more critical about certain aspects that I probably wouldn't have given two fucks about as a child playing this game. But outside of that, put down the critical analysis, put down the the shitty game revision. And I feel like it executes just as well as it did back then. Like I to be honest with you, especially like now because when i played it back then i didn't know anything about it i was just like sonic sega we're in it you know but now that i know that it only had a two month dev cycle and they didn't have the fucking tune like the theme tune they had to program that shit in two hours flat i'm just like kudos to y'all sti you fucking nailed it out of the park yeah exactly Knox. for two month development time impressive very impressive, especially if this was the game where they had to change the coding from assembly to C or maybe it was C to assembly. Anyways, they decided basically on the fly, look, we're not going to get this done. We need to change the actual fucking code um, for two months. That's fucking crazy, bro. So I have a much more forgiving outlook on Sonic Spinball nowadays. Uh, so my memory core is unpolluted, unmarred. If anything, uh, it's reinforced and bolstered by the information that we've been given. Thank you, Vicer, for redeeming that. I appreciate you redeeming the game. 
Sonic Spinball is great. Good choice. You brought Sonic to OTL. I was waiting for somebody to do it, um, and you were the one. <laughs> Let me catch up on chat, guys. I'm sorry. I've been ignoring you here. Uh, let's get rid of Sonic, and let's bring up our next game. And let me catch up on chat. Oh, Nox, you redeemed Hydrate Toast. Okay. Okay, uh, let me hydrate. Uh, do I have a toast off the top of my head? I have a list. I have a Word doc of all these toasts. I have a lot of them memorized, but I, I was like, let me... Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, a toast, a toast, a toast to my lawyer. To my lawyer for getting that sodomy charge reduced down to mere tailgating. There it is. As soon as it's funny, because as soon as I did that toast, I watched like two viewers go boop <laughs> out of here. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. All right, let me keep catching up here. Uh, your life is a roller coaster, Lamal. Yeah, bro, it is. Uh, Heeks, it, it is kind of a roller coaster, without a doubt. But I don't even like I said. I don't even get frustrated about shit that people normally get frustrated about. Like you know, I'll make a big deal and bitch and moan about it, but I'm not actually frustrated. I'm just doing it for comedic effect. So. Uh, fucking stoners, man. Like, and also, if you trip a bunch, if you do a lot of uh, psychedelics, you you kind of find that the things that would get you all bent out of shape just don't fucking affect you anymore. It's just like a piece of your brain just you ripped it off. You scalped yourself. It's great. Uh, birthdays can be odd. You're taking it well. It's good to see. Yeah, man. Life is life is great. Like, look, my life, my life. The fact that I made it this long is fucking uh, astounding. Absolutely astounding. Birthdays can be odd. I just don't tell people when my birthday is, so I have no expectations about it. It sucks more to look forward to it. Vicer, when's your birthday? Vicer, tell me when your birthday is. I want to know. Because I'm going to make a big fucking deal out of it. Big fucking deal. It's funny because I go oh, uh, amidst all of this stuff going on with Joey and this breakup. Like, I forgot that it was his birthday. And I was just like, oh, shit. I forgot to wish him. I mean, I did give him a gift. He has the first Cerulean Skies shirt ever made, which me and Tonio created. So, you know, there's that. I did give him that. He has that. I gave him that way early, but I also forgot to wish him a happy birthday. Not like, oh, I guarantee he's like, oh, six didn't wish me a happy birthday. My life's in shambles. Yeah, I, I doubt he's like that. <laughs> like, uh, But, you know, I feel bad that I... I forgot his fucking birthday, but I'm just like, bro, I don't, I don't know anybody's birthday. So, you know, I have to write this shit down. Vicer, I don't see your birthday up in this chat. When's your birthday, Vicer? Are you older than Frankie or are you younger than Frankie? I'm guessing you guys are the same age. Uh, yeah, your spinal fluid is just training out. <laughs> Trapped in Gaza, no way out, living on the edge. Oh, could be a good mobile game pastime. Knox, you are on to it, brother. I feel like uh, a new iteration of Sonic Spinball would be a fantastic fucking um, mobile game. Like, uh, I miss Joey. What the fuck? I'm like a year younger than the freak. I do. I do miss Joey, too. He's uh, sporadically been messaging me. The last time I talked to him was like October 3rd. So he's it's been like 10 days since I've talked to him. But I keep in touch with uh, Tonio. Tonio lets me know he's alive. So I'm just like, OK, whenever he wants to talk to me, he can come talk to me. I was like, I ain't fucking chasing his ass. I ain't chasing nobody down. I was like, uh, I'm like Vicer in that regard. If you want to talk to Vicer, if you if you initiate communication with Vicer, Vicer will talk to you all day long. But if you're sitting back waiting for Vicer to text you, he ain't gonna. <laughs> He's he's got his own life, you know. People got their own lives to lead and to take. So, all right, guys, let's get into Marble Madness. Marble Madness box art. Does this box art execute? Does it do the things it is supposed to do? Um, no Sonic on the cover. Fail. <laughs> I think. I think it kind of executes. I think it's, uh, 
it's weird because like look this the sega genesis version is a port and it's a port of the original game and the original game came out in 1984 so i don't know if this box art is just like a rip of the original 1984 box art if you guys want to do your own uh, internet journalism the investigative reporting let me know uh but ah, okay aesthetically not a pleasing box art to look at aesthetically speaking i do like the font i do like what they're doing with the font though i do like that uh however under my own criteria it does have action and it does encapsulate what the game is about so under that criteria technically it does pass i do think it executes what it is supposed to although aesthetically could be a little bit more charming and pleasing to the eye could be could be could reduce some of that blur oh yeah the blur is for movement <laughs> The cover needed a second or third pass. I agree, Knox. I agree. Like, for, you also have this empty space, like, outside of the action of the video game, all this purple stuff. And I feel like it's just negative space being wasted. And then you have all this font and bullshit down here on the bottom half of it. It's so, it's just aesthetically is weird you know that's why i think this is ripped off of like the 1984 release because this looks like 84 shit not 91 you know this is 91 it's like fuck technocop did better than this what the fuck all right new segment get that out of here bring back the primary monitor bada bing we got ourselves a commercial break when you're ready for a real challenge, you're ready for Marvel Madness. There are deadly steelies, marble munchers, acid pools, digital waves, vacuum cleaners, catapults, pistons, pounding hammers, killer birds, and they're all after you. Do you have what it takes to reach the silly maze where everything's upside down, or the ultimate maze where even the maze moves? Do you have what it takes, or will Marble Madness make you lose your marbles? Marble Madness. And coming soon, Jordan versus Bird, one-on-one -on -one for your Nintendo. Okie dokie. All right, turn the primary monitor off and we're back. Let's bring Marble Madness back up. Uh, Mar Marble Muncher is what I call Six of Death. <laughs> because he's gay. <laughs> um, that was a commercial for the NES version, which I was going to do the OTL for, but I was like, hey, let's do the Sega version. I actually played Marble Madness for the NES a lot more than I ever did for the Sega because I owned it for the NES, but I did rent it for the Sega. So it technically falls under the criteria in which I can review it. And that's what I did. Uh, so that was a Nintendo commercial. They don't have a Sega Genesis commercial for Marble Madness, at least not on the YouTubes. Blah. All right. Marble Madness released in November of 91 for the Sega, but the OG version of the game. Uh, hold on. I'm doing some doing some shit over here. I got to something's fucking up. Uh, do that. Do that. Make that go away. Make that go away. OK, cool. The OG arcade game came out way back when in 1984. Big brother. Uh, Orson Welles. Uh, Dev pumped by atari and midway games both they developed and published it both of them the main designer mark cerny c-e-r-n-y cerny cerny drew inspiration from miniature golf racing games and from the artwork of mc escher uh as seen here uh, that's where he got his inspiration. I really do like the third MC Escher, the artwork here. That's super cool. Like, I, I think that's legit. Um, so that's where he drew inspiration from. Uh, Marble Madness. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, Marble Madness was the very first arcade game to use an FM sound chip exclusively made by Yamaha, similar to their DX7 synthesizer, which created the music in real time so that it's synchronized with the on-screen action. Innovation, baby. Innovation. Cierney, lead design, and Flanagan, software engineer, were were working on a video game centered around Michael Jackson's thriller. 
Uh, but once that project was canceled, so began the 10 month dev time to make Marble Madness. Um, I am I am broad stroking it. These are broad strokes. I am broad stroking it. But the actual story behind the production of Marble Madness is super fascinating. Uh, I highly recommend uh, go read the Wikipedia article for it. It is amazingly in depth for a Wikipedia article about a video game that basically nobody knows about. I was like, holy shit, you guys really went into this for this fucking game. Um, critics shit all over the home ports of Marble Madness for lacking a trackball, uh, get good scrubs. Uh, I never fucking played a trackball with this game. Atari were working on a follow-up sequel in 1991 and even released the sequel in a few test market arcades, but reception went really bad, went very poorly as it was going up against Street Fighter 2 at the time in the arcades. So no one, ain't no one gonna fucking play the sequel of the marble madness when you got street fighter 2 all right they, they they're just not going to that's not gonna happen so here we go here's my supplementary more supplementary uh material so because it had such a shitty following in the arcades uh atari pivoted scrapped the sequel to marble madness 2 focused all of their energy on Guardians of the Hood <laughs> to capitalize on Street Fighter. <laughs> Guardians of the Hood. <laughs> That's not it. I got one more for you. Guardians of the Hood. Here we go. Here's some game live game screen footage of Guardians of the Hood. Who wanted this? Who was asking for this? Who demanded it? Fucking God damn. Hilarious. Guardians of the Hood. Woo. Yep, you are correct, Knox. It looks like a really bad uh, Streets of Rage ripoff. It, it's, it was like the early 90s where... 91? 91, 92, where the genre of fighting game was still weirdly mis miscegenated and fucking blurred in with uh, uh, left to right beat em ups. You know, they're two distinctly different genres, but for whatever reason, game companies and game journalists just fucking put them all in the same soup all the time, all the time. So they would they would call Streets of Rage a fighting game all the time. Fucking drove me nuts. Even me as a fucking nine year old moron. I knew the difference. I was like, come on, guys. Jesus Christ. Um, so Guardians of the Hood. Marble Madness for the Genesis is one of the chosen few that actually utilizes the Sega mouse. Not very many games do. For obvious reasons, I didn't even know there was a Sega Mouse until I sat down to do some fucking research for Marble Madness for the Genesis. And here we are. <laughs> like, you know, Sega Mouse rocks. All right. I also, a uh, quick critical analysis on the Sega Mouse. Okay, 91. Let's just say 90. Because, you know, it was 10 month dev time and the Sega Mouse was existent before then. As far as a mouse goes, this is really good for fucking 1990s. You got three buttons and a weird, uh, I imagine that's like a almost kind of like a click wheel in the center of modern day mouses. That's really good. Like I, I applaud the Sega Mouse like they were doing some shit there. And that's Marvel Madness. That's what I have for Marvel Madness. So let's let's kick it to the game. Let's get in there. I gotta get some vapes. So let's switch over to Sega. And bada bing, I'll let that play. Let you guys uh, check that out while I get some vapes. Ah, 
just decided to pick up and throw my fucking vape into the wall. <laughs> That's how it goes. Oh. What I distinctly remember from Marble Madness was the soundtrack. The soundtrack fucking slaps. Although, I don't know if the Sega Farts version of it will be better. Maybe, but maybe for the wrong kind of reasons, you know. Vapor H is real. Mouse looks too small, otherwise can work with index, middle, and ring finger. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Knox. You got it. You got it on lockdown. Sony Mark Cerny, the one with the soothing voice, Knack Creator. Oh, it is that guy. Oh, no shit. No shit. I did not know. The name sounded familiar. I didn't go, because what I'll usually do is like I'll Wikipedia surf when I'm making the notes. And I'll be like, oh, let me check out this guy. Maybe he's got something I could say. Oh, let me check out this company. Maybe they got something I can say. And I just go down a rabbit hole and just fucking write about whatever the hell I think is interesting. Okay. All right, Marvel Madness. You're not, you're not giving us anything. We get it. We get it. All right. Go ahead and start 15 minutes. Uh, players. Ooh, there's a, there's a weird lag. I don't think that's emulation, but maybe it is. We'll just keep everything normal. Just keep everything where it is. Yep, here we are. Oh, 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 oh! Who's the marble champion? Who's the marble king? Who's the marble mega? That's me. I'm Mr. Marbles. Um... It's a progenitor of the... Oh, this song fucks, by the way. This is a really good song. Um, oh, God, this guy's on my ass. It's a progenitor of, like, the Super Monkey Ball kind of genre. Like, that's that's basically what you get when you play this game. If you like Super Monkey Ball... Ooh, shit on me. You will like Marble Madness. Uh, although... The game is Nintendo hard in some regards. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, fuck me. Are you serious? God damn, bro. Isometric view. Not the greatest for gameplay. Not the greatest, but it's pretty good, though. The controls are pretty responsive. It's not, it's not as bad as it probably looks. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> okay. Oh god, why did they... Why did they... I take back everything I said about the responsive controls. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, okay. Let's just slow down. Let's just go very slow. Oh, okay. This, this, this song does not fuck. This is a little... This is a little, uh... Uh, Hotel Bates, Psycho, Shower Scene. All right. Oh, God! Oh, I fucking bur melted! There we go. Nice. 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 Oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, God. Are you serious? Oh, all right. Well, we gotta ride that wave. We gotta do that. Oh, if we can get there. If we can get there, boys and girls. Oh, Jesus! Fuck! <laughs> okay, all right, we got it, we got it. We... <laughs> God damn, are you serious? Game over! Oh, no, we have to start. Hey, first place. No, 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 not two players. One player. No, no, one player. What is the control? What does that do? Grid? What is grid? I don't know. Let's let's find that out. Let's what the fuck is grid? Uh oh no. Oh no. Grid! Ooh, no, we can't do that, guys. We cannot do that. No, 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 no. 
we gotta restart that one <laughs> grid is uh your controls are like the isometric view but like flipped mm -mm. it's fucked mm -mm. you don't want any part of that none of that none all right let's get in there fuck dude they make you go all the way back to the start we're here for another 11 minutes boys and girls <laughs> happy birthday to me <laughs> oh my god all right we'll get there though we'll get there uh you guys got any scandalous weekend plans what are you guys doing for the weekend uh tomorrow i am going to stream continue streaming pentiment with my older brother in the morning 8 30 ish and then after i am done streaming i'm gonna go party with friends oh fuck the ball fell apart dusted dusted oh can't even go off that ledge no 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 ledge jumping uh i'm gonna go party with friends uh for my birthday probably get a little too drunk uh, I wanted to do psychedelics, but I have to drive, so I don't, uh, I'm not like Stench. Stench can, Stench can literally do his body weight in psychedelics and then drive and be no problem. I don't know how he does it, because, like, literally every time, like, I do psychedelics, I lose giant chunks of time. And, like, where I'm just like, oh my god, I disappeared for 35 minutes, where did I go? And I do not feel like I should be behind the wheel when that's happening. Nah, not in Florida. Not in Florida. And then Sunday, I will probably, I don't know. I will uh, I'll probably recuperate and get ready for the work week. And just fucking, I don't know, hang out and do Baldur's Gate. I thought about maybe streaming on Sunday, too. Uh, maybe streaming. Is World of Horror, have they finished it yet? Is it done? Is it full release? If World of Horror is full release, I will stream it on Sunday. I've been waiting for Antonio. He's making me uh, a new overlay for DOS games, for old school computer games, just for, because I, I would like to do, start doing an outside the lens for DOS and shareware games. Because Lord knows I spent a lot of time playing those fuckers. So I've been kind of like the uh, pumping the brakes until Tonio's done with it. He keeps telling me, ah, oh, just a couple more days, just a couple more days, <laughs> which, which I know Tonio, <laughs> especially now that I know that he, oh shit, oh, he covertly watches these. Like I'll talk more shit about him. A couple more days is loosely, loosely Antonio time. That's four and a half months. So. But look, no shade, no shade for me, because that man does shit that I could never do in a thousand fucking years. And also, it's just me doing some piddly fucking games to, uh, what, five viewers? So, you yeah, know, who gives a fuck? I take back everything I said about the soundtrack, by the way. This, this fucking sucks. It's probably better on the NES, which makes no sense, but. All right, we gotta get over there. I don't wanna get a game over. Oh, God. All right. Okay, come on. Come on. Are you fucking serious, bro? Dusted. Mm -hmm. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, game over. I will continue to torture myself by getting into VR every day. <laughs> uh, what do you play in VR, Pfizer? Like, if I wanted to get into VR, where would I go? I don't even know what to do. VR, like I don't even know what to play in VR. I just know it exists, and I know there's VR porn. Although it's all from point of view, but generally speaking, like I find point of view porn to be really blech. I'm not a big fan of it, but in VR, it could be a totally different experience, you know. So, Half Life Alex is the best game for it. Are you serious? Like the best like game game? Um. Uh, there's not much to play. VR chat is the way to go. What is VR chat? Like, what is VR chat? Like, when you first posted about it, I was stoned and I was thinking, I was like, why is Vicer talking about VCRs? <laughs> but I, I realized, you know, it makes sense. It makes more sense. All right, we're just going to skip that part. We don't need to do that shit. We don't need to do the. Ooh, still so. Yeah, Half Life Alex is better. Oh, no shit. Like, I mean, I could get down with some some fucking half-life especially in vr at the gravity gun in vr oh god sounds like a fucking ball to me 
sounds like a marble madness. VR chat is just in a virtual environment or virtual environment for people to chat or drink or other shit. I make content for it. Oh, okay, that's the that's the stuff that you've showed me before. Like that you made a you made like a lounge or a bar or Lord. Okay, we gotta we gotta hustle ass on this one. Cause I don't wanna fucking die. Let's put it this way. If I die on this level, we're going to the next game. Fuck this game. Alright. I'm not I'm not keen on fucking game overs that send you back to the beginning of the fucking game. I don't have the time for that bullshit. Time is money. Money is time. And money is also money. So okay. We're gonna get it though. We're gonna nail it out of the park. Look at this shit. Fuck that. Skipping that. We don't need that. Oh god, fell right in. Uh, Alright. Fell right down. There's that. Come on, ball. You can get up there. You can get up there. We made it! We made it. Gotta bounce. Happy birthday, Six. Ah, thanks, brother. Thanks for hanging out with me, Knox. Uh, AKA Adversary Destroyer Kings, Angel of the Bottomless Pit, Great Beast that is called Dragon Prince of this World, Father of Lies, Spawn of Satan, and Lord of Darkness. <laughs> Six, for short. Um... <laughs> Makes it easy to stay focused on Unity when you can suit up and see the things you've made in VR. Nice. Nice to people watch or eavesdrop on literally insane conversations. You talked me into a visor. Would I need to get like an Oculus? Can... I don't like Facebook. Is there a way to get a VR rig without fucking Oculus? I know they make other VR headsets. Can we just get past this guy? Not like that. I know they make other VR headsets. I know, like, what is it? I think Samsung has one. But, I mean, if Oculus is the best one out there, then I guess I should go with the best one. I just don't like fucking companies keeping my bio data and all that shit. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. Which is funny, because I just put all that shit out on the internet anyway, so... <laughs> for free! But that's my decision! You know? Like, I'm the one who makes that decision. What happened to my ball? Oh, we got more time. Cool. All right, we're gonna need it. We're gonna need it. Definitely gonna need it. HTC, oh, HTC Vive, okay. I think I've uh, heard some rumblings on the internet about that. Oh, God, guys, we're not gonna make it. Fuck me. Fuck me, fuck this. All right, Marble Madness, you had your chance. All right, you had your chance. Fuck this game. Uh, we're done with this game. No, 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 no more. Sorry, Marvel Madness. I can't do it anymore. I cannot do it. Ugh, I do not like games that send you back to the beginning of the fucking game. That's not my thing. I know that's an arcadey kind of thing. It's a, it's a symptom of the times, but mm -mm. Mm -mm. not here. In here, we are 2016 all day long. So, Quest is the best for its price. I'd say get a Quest, see if you like it, and then get a better headset in the later future if it ticks your fancy. I have Vive leg trackers, so Vive definitely isn't a bad option. Get stoned and see dope locations, more or less. Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, to be honest with you, like I said, you talked me into it, because like I've always been interested in VR ever since like seeing it at the county fair when I was like 11 years old and being very, very disappointed with it. Or going to Disney Quest here in Florida, Orlando. Well, they don't have it anymore, but um, Disney Quest, and they had these big, giant VR rigs that would come down, the headset, and you'd be like this, And but the games were terrible. They had no... Like, no collision detection whatsoever. It sucks. Terrible. And that kind of, like, put the nail in the coffin for me with VR, but it's a different world now, you know? We have we have the technology. VR is insane how well it's done. Like it's legit very close to being real bona fide VR. I like. I like. How much um how much would not <clears throat> not a computer, because I feel like my computer could handle VR now. My Apex laptop, maybe not, but my Apex desktop, definitely so. How much would a VR rig cost me? Like headset, leg trackers, whatever the fuck you need. Like ballpark, how much? How much we talk? Let's talk numbers. Um, criteria number one for the 15 minutes in which I played Marble Madness, was I entertained? No. No. 
it has aged terribly terribly good concept good concept probably fun for the time probably a good quarter muncher in 1984 not so great now not not very entertaining i mean i quit with four minutes left so you know that's uh criteria number two uh now that i played this game does my memory of this game exist outside the lens of nostalgia no it does not it has been perverted it has been corrupted the memory core it's in a bad place now it's no longer active no longer viable you cannot access it bonsai buddied mm -mm. i will i still think the soundtrack slaps on the nez version i haven't gone back and listened to it in a very long time it does not slap so much on the sega version but that's the sega sound chip is weird so you know mm. all right let me catch up on chat of course standalone you don't even need oh no shit are you serious standalone I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I mean, the index alone is 1K. What's the index? And that's just controllers and a headset. Oh, okay. Is that what the index is? Controllers and the headset? The Quest 3 is like uh, 700 bucks. I'd say go for the Quest 2. It's like 300 bucks. Doesn't need a computer, but you can plug it into a computer and use your computer's power. Plus it's wireless. Valve index is Steam's. Oh, okay. So what are what's an index? Like in VR world, like how does a, what is an index? Like how does that play into shit? <coughs> I mean, money is no option, Vicer. You know me. Like, there's that ain't gonna keep us from anything. Like, I only want best of the best. Four thousand dollars sold, <laughs> so I can make two streams where there are four people watching. <laughs> That's how you do it, baby. That's how you do it. Valve Index is just uh, Steam's VR headset. I like it, but it's heavy and has a thick cord. Okay, so when they say index, that's like the, the headpiece? That's like the actual visor? Is that the visor? Visor? <laughs> uh, that's just the name of it. Oh, okay. Well, that, that doesn't clarify anything for me. <laughs> Hopefully this does. Like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Here we are. The controllers let you track your fingers, so index is referring to that. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. What is the game that I've seen, like, clips of where people are doing, like, crazy kung fu hustle, like, shit with frying pans and shooting the frying pan to hit an enemy and then, like, jumping 40 feet in the air and coming down with a fucking lightsaber on them and then doing, like, dabbing, Fortnite dabbing afterwards? I'm like, what is that game? That game, I, I want to know what that game is. Uh, Frank uses a quest too. Ah, because he's a Poro. Maybe Blade and Sorcery? Maybe. Maybe. Frank's a Poro, so, you know. How does, how does Frank sustain himself financially? It's just me and you here, Vicer. We're the only ones here. <laughs> I've always been interested in how Frankie actually makes money. I'm just like... Certainly premium isn't paying him that much. I mean, maybe, maybe they are. I don't fucking know. People love drug six. <laughs> there it is. There's the truth. Okay. <laughs> Say no more. Say less, fam. Say less. <laughs> that makes more sense. People do love drugs. I kind of wish that I had gotten high before I started doing this, to be honest with you. But we're here. We're here at the last game. The last game is right now. Ghouls and Ghosts, does this box art execute? Does it do the things it is supposed to do? Guess what, y'all? It fucking rules. This box art slaps so hard. Holy shit. Slaps your mama, like, slaps the taste out of her mouth, which she could use. Bukaki. Um, encapsulates what the game is about. You are a knight in armor. You got some weird cyclopean beast behind you. There's lightning. There's armor. You look like your character in the game and on the box art. 
Not like fucking Wizards and Warriors where you got a cool looking warrior and then you get into the game and you're just this dinky tinfoil knight. No, that's what you look like. That's you. I love everything about this box art. Is there action? Yes, lots of action. We got, we are Jersey Shore fist pumping it. We are making it to our way. Like we got lightning striking this man and we got the Cyclopean beast in the back. And for whatever reason, there's a fucking waterfall right there. Just a single waterfall. <laughs> Weird choice, but that's fine. That's cool. I'm with it. I love this box art. I feel like this box art fucking annihilates. For me personally, I owned a copy of Ghouls and Ghosts when I was a kid. I don't know where I got it from, but it was like the second Sega game that I ever had. Maybe first. No, second. First was Altered Beast. Um, when I think about Sega Genesis, I think about this box art. Like, this is the box art that makes me, like, identifiably think Sega. So, like, I think this box art fucking knocks it out of the park. I do not have a promotional video for no commercial for Ghouls and Ghosts, so we're going to get straight into the notes. Ghouls and Ghosts released onto the Genesis September of 89. A port of the December of 88 arcade classic developed by Sega R&D 2, uh, published through Sega themselves, programmed by Yuji Naka, our boy, uh, most famous for uh, Balan Wonderland, Wonderworld. We all know that game. Duh. <laughs> Naka accepted the offer to work on Ghouls and Ghosts right after he had wrapped up Fantasy Star 2. Naka himself specifically asked to work on the port because it knocked his socks off the arcade version um, when it was demoed at the 88 uh, Amusement Machine Show. Uh, the part he was most interested in? The Sloped Hills. Verbatim, that's what he said. Uh, diagonal ground movement was something of a rarity for this era of platformers. Um, you just never know what will turn a nerd on uh so naka visited capcom capcom gave him the source code and rom data naka found out holy shit just the program alone is bigger than the four meg cartridges sega cartridges so he's like well, what is a boy to do you know and he's just like this is the fucking program is bigger than the cartridges that sega gave us what are we going to do so naturally they compress the fuck out of it <laughs> they put all sorts of weird shit workarounds in the code but they still could not get the game under 512 kb which is fucking amazing that they were coding a game under 500, under one meg. Fucking unbelievable. Um, so Naka petitioned and pleaded with Sega to just give him one more megabyte on the cartridge. One more, just one. Uh, because he did not want to have to compromise and start programming with a fillet knife, basically. You know, he didn't, you know. And say what you will about Sega, and we have been dogging the fuck out of Sega this entire uh, episode, but uh, Sega granted it. They took the risk. Naka talked his way to a sale, and the game not only sold big by itself, but for the first few months, Ghouls and Ghosts pushed console sales, which you lose money on the hardware, but you gain money on the software. Um, because you increase your install base. Once you have an increased install base, people buy more games, you make more money. That's basically, you know, console sales 101. Um, and so not only that, it opened the door for Capcom to work with Sega, who had Capcom up to that point, had essentially zero interests in Sega. Like they were just like, oh, they make some racing games. OK, whatever. Outrun? <laughs> That's it. For whatever reason, Capcom didn't really have much of an interest in the Sega Genesis. But after Ghouls and Ghosts, Capcom was all about the Sega Genesis, which benefited all of us. Um, but due to what uh, Naka learned in development for Ghouls and Ghosts, Naka directly credits 
uh, Ghouls and Ghosts for inspiring Sanic the Hedgehog for with all his feral slopes and wild loop de loops. Uh, the Sega port of this game won EGM's awards for best game, best graphics, uh, best sequel, and coolest boss. Uh, if you ever gave a fuck about what EGM thinks, not much of us did. Well, let me rephrase. Not much of us do. Uh, back then, very, very highly thought uh, something about EGM's opinion. But, you know, I was fucking 10 years old. What the fuck did I know? So... Uh, tremendous. I can guarantee you, even before we get to the critical analysis of this game, I'm going to love it. It's going to live up. It's fucking ghouls and ghosts. I mean, it was a magnificent game when it came out and, uh, only good memories about it. Well, it was very frustrating at the time. It was one of the first games that basically were like, get good scrub. <laughs> like, uh, you suck now, but you lose a couple thousand times and you'll get better. You will get better. All right, there it is. I'm gonna lay out for a minute, let it do its thing. Ah, we just have a demo, no intro. Okay, that's fine though. That's fine. That's fine. Reprogrammed game. It's weird that they put that down in the uh, the byline there. We got options. Practice and professional. Uh, diagonals. Okay. No diagonals. None. I'm racist to diagonals. Uh, we'll keep everything. I just want to check out the options. All right. Now I'm going to reset the timer because I want the full 15 minutes. Here we go. Yep. Just as I remember it. All right, what do we got going on here? Okay, we got our spears. We got the enemies that are up your ass at every point. They never stop coming. Let's see how much of this fucking game I can remember. Okay, that is a trap. Guarantee that's a trap. Oh, he's got the shit. Oh, he's got the shit. We need the shit. There we go. Got it. Ah, uh, it's only points? Yep, there he is. Fuck that guy. Oh, God. Lord. Already. Uh, also, soundtrack fucking rips. Good soundtrack. Don't know why I'm not getting armor power up. Okay, there's my armor power up. All right, we're back to normie armor. Very good. Oh, look at this. Just a master at this game. I'm too good. I'm too good, guys. Ghouls and ghosts can't fucking contain me. All right, here we go. Yep, I remember this shit. All the feathers. Look at that. Look at that. All oh, that animation, that glorious animation. The big one, the big one. That's for French monarchs. All right, we got some resistance, some wind blowing. Oh yeah, that's right, he's got shields. Uh, jumpy jumps. Get fucked. Oh, oh, trap? Yep, that's trap. Fuck, I'm a duck! <laughs> no. All right, we're going to use those iframes. We need them. Okay, good. Back in the armor. We're back in it, boys. Back in it. Okay. All right. Ooh, just the just the hair. Just the hair. Just the Ooh, that was that was just bad gaming right there. Bad gaming. Bad gaming. Okay. We're in it. Is there a midway point? Yeah, there is. Oh, thank God. Oh, Lord. At least they were uh, merciful in that regard, you know? They didn't have to do that. All right, that's the trap. Was there armor around here? Was that a trap? Yep, yeah, it was a trap. Fuck. <laughs> the, the goldfish memory. Literally just saw it two minutes ago. Oh, fuck. I was trying to shoot up, man. I wasn't trying to climb the ladder. All right. Let's get serious mode. Oh, you can't. Oh, yeah, that's right. The vomiting pig. The vomiting pig. All over. Oh, God. Hit the desk. All right. Let's see if we can beat stage. Wow, oh, fuck. Hit the desk again. 
see if we can beat stage one. We can do it. We can do it. Can we do it in 15 minutes? Yeah, give me that shit. Give me that points? Oh, wait. Oh, fuck! More traps? Ooh, there we go. Just by... Oh, almost, almost got hit. Almost. They can't contain this spicer. Mm, I know too much. All right, come on, puke and pig. There it is. Mm. Sound design is actually pretty good too. Uh, a little on the minimal side, but that's okay. The sound effects themselves are satisfying. All right, boss time. Boss time, yep. Ah, uh, tremendous first fucking boss. Okay. All right, well, obviously... Oh, God. Oh, fucking wrecked. Get wrecked. Take a key for coming in. Pardon? Excuse me? Okie doke. Oh, yeah, man. Music. Bringing us back. Holy shit. The turtles! God, we got fucking Goldie hanging out here. All his fucking brethren. Jesus. H. All right. We're in serious mode because we're in boxers. Do people still wear boxers? Oh, game over. Oh, no. Game over. Uh, don't marble madness me. Okay, thank God. Jesus. Lord. Uh, boxers are not my thing. I used to wear boxers exclusively. I do not anymore. Uh, not enough ball support, man. Too much gravity. Too much gravity. I need ball support. All right. We're getting older. As evidenced by today, this birthday stream, you will die. No surviving this game. <laughs> yep. It's true. It's true. The one... Ooh, God. Ooh, God. <laughs> the one thing I do not like about this game, though, and it's, it's more a symptom of the time. I bet that's gonna, yep. It's more a symptom of the time. You beat the game, and then the game's like, oh no, you didn't have the item to defeat the final boss. Beat the game again with the item. Mm -mm, not a fan of that. Don't like that sh shit. Seriously? It's, I feel like that's padding, and I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that shit. Okay, that is definitely a break right there. We can see it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. That's, ooh, didn't see that one. Didn't see that one. That's fine, that's fine. Ooh, or that one, or that one. Okay. Are you fucking serious? It's fair, it's fair. There's a lot of, you know, gotcha shit in fucking Ghouls and Ghosts. That's to be expected, you know. Oh, God, these fucking shells, man. They never stop coming. Seriously, bro. That's why I like the, the speed runs that I see of this game or games in the, the uh, you know, the long catalog of ghouls and ghosts, goblins and ghosts, ghouls and goblins, where the fuck the names are. I, uh, all of them confuse me. Dai, Ka Dai Kimura, whatever the fuck the name is. Um, speed runs are super satisfying. I'm a big fan of the speed runs. All right, get these fucking turtles the fuck out of here. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna speed run this shit right now. Just go straight. Just keep going forward. Trap, trap trap. That's fine. Ooh, I don't know how I survived that one. Oh, god damn, bro. Seriously. Please relent. Please. Okay. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. This is less challenging. This part is less challenging. More just irritating. That's fine. Okay. Okay! Fuck, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> okay, there's a, there's one right there. Just jump up. 
jump over. Okay, there's one right there. Nope, that was the one. Okay, hold on. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. All right, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. And there's one directly above that fuck. The, uh, the sandworm. Whatever the fuck this shit is. Okay. And we jump! It wasn't directly above. <laughs> it was to the right. Now we know. Now we know. Now we can get through it. We're gonna get through it. I want to see at least the second boss. Just keep going. Nope, that doesn't. That strategy doesn't work. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> All right, get in this. I remember seeing episodes of Nick Arcade. The fucking kids trying to play this game. <laughs> the challenge would be get 1,200 points, which is you know, look, I got 800 points. I killed two turtles. I have 800 points, and the kids still couldn't fucking get it. <laughs> Which I know, I know, I read about Nick Arcade later. They purposefully chose kids that didn't have a lot of good video game background because, you know, one, they didn't want to give out those prizes, and two, they wanted to create fake suspense. So, you know, I get it. Okay. It's right at the end. So we're going to say, fuck that. All right, we learned from our mistakes. We actually learned. Oh, God. All right. Run, Arthur. Shit, that was close. Boss? Oh, yeah, the Red Devil. The Red Imp. Uh, what's his name? He had his own game. It was a pretty good game. Demon's Crest. It was good. It was good stuff. I don't remember his name, though. Oh, fuck. We're all the way back here? It's not a mid... Not a midpoint? I did it again. The exact same thing. Yeah, Red Devil. That's right, Red Devil. That's the thing. Is that his name? Red Devil? Yeah, Demon's Crest, man. Demon's Crest was good. Like, surprisingly good. Really good. I would love to fucking revisit some uh, Demon's Crest for OTL. I just wonder who spilled grape jelly everywhere. <laughs> are you a jelly guy, uh, Vicer, or are you a jam guy? Which one are you? It will it will decide the uh, the flow of our friendship from here on out. Jam is way better. This man knows. He is a scholar and a gentleman. You can't fucking spread jelly. Nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Oh god. Oh okay. We still made it. Okay, we're good. Yeah, bro. It's jam all the way. Um, me particularly, I like when my foods are also verbs. So you know. All right, we're not gonna let Red Devil fuck with this. Oh, he did. Get a jar of preserves, be happy. Yeah, bro, preserves are worth that. Like, there is nothing more satisfying than like a perfectly toasted piece of white bread oh, with some fucking jam on it, where it's still, the bread is still radiating a tiny little amount of heat Oh god, in the wheat. And then uh, the jam. Oh fuck, we got the axe. Hell yeah. Finally, a different weapon. And then the jam is bringing down the heat with a little bit of the cold. It's fucking beautiful, man. So good. So good. Oh god, Jesus. The turtles. They don't want me to have the axe. I just want the axe. If you have peanut butter on it, the peanut butter will melt out. Brother, I was such, I was a ridiculously picky eater. Oh, we still have the axe, okay. I was a very, very picky eater as a child. Um, and there, oh God, the axe sucks. Um, basically my entire, why can we get rid of this axe? This axe is garbage. My entire uh, diet as a child uh, during this era of gameplay was peanut butter toast. That's it. I would eat four slices of peanut butter toast and sometimes even eight slices of peanut butter toast. And I was by far the most constipated kid on the neighborhood. <laughs> Did shit for a week. <laughs> so don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Uh, man, I don't want this axe, bro. This axe sucks. 
I mean, yeah, you get to hit multiple enemies, but... It's slow. Look at that. Uh, man. Is the Red Devil the uh, boss of this stage? Because I kind of want to beat him. Alright, jump. Jump. Oh, look at that. Speed, speed trap. That's how you do it. Bam. Bam. Oh, we're in it. We are in it. Oh, shit. No, oh, I missed the chest that came up to you. Fuck. No, oh, we're just gonna sit here and die to the red devil. Oh, yeah. Get fucked. Yeah. Eat shit. Mm -mm. The axe took him out. I take back everything I said about the axe. Oh, oh, that's right. Oh, okay. The frisbee. Ah, oh, bro. You want to play some froth? Fuck. Please give me... Oh, it's not going to give me the midway point, is it? Because I died at the game over. Pain! Oh, it did. Nice. Fuck yeah. All right, we're in it. We're in it, boys and girls. we still got the frisbee. Frisbee, not my favorite, but better than the axe. Anything is better than the axe. Someone's gonna tell me the axe is like the best item in the game. Ooh, trap. How far does that thing travel? Fuck. Jesus. H, man. I am getting the feels though. This game is giving me the feels. Like I feel like a young child again. I'm sitting in Tallapoosa, Georgia. Oh, shit. Is that the Holy Flame? I can't get it. Oh. Ah, thanks, game. Nice. I didn't want to fuck with that anyways. Um, Getting the feels. My Meemaw chain smoking. And a very, very badly ventilated room. Oh, are you serious? So many traps. So many mimics. Mimic chests. Terrible. Uh, timer's going off, but I, I want to see... We're going to keep going. I want to see the uh, boss to stage two. So, I'm just going to keep going. And it's just me and Vicer here anyway, so... <laughs> so, you know. We do whatever we want. Bada bing, bada bing. Vicer, when's your birthday? Also, is your mom hot? Uh... <laughs> can't believe Axel won't show me a picture of his mom. The disrespect. And I brought this boy up in fighting games and he won't even show me a picture of his mom. Can't believe it. Cannot believe it. Oh, boss? Oh, God. I was. Yep, yep, yep. He's still going, baby. That's right. I've never met my mother before. Ooh, sorry about that. I think that's right. You think he told me that before? It was a weird situation. Though. Yeah, Axel, what the fuck? That's right. Frankie, what are you up to? We're just hanging out here. Oh, God. Oh, easy peasy. Look at that shit. Probably hot, though, just saying. Your mom? Or Axel's mom? Or both? Both Both is also an option. Uh, look at this knight. Sucker. Absolute sucker. All moms. Correct. Mine starting to look like a crone in her old age, though. <laughs> she called earlier when I was streaming, probably to wish me a happy birthday. My fucking father forgot it was my birthday. <laughs> it's, it's okay. I don't. I don't expect more than that. So, my brother. Oh, the sword. The sword sucks so bad. Um, my brother, who I stream with every Saturday fucking literally just sent me a text and was like, happy birthday, you old fuck. I'll talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> I was like, what a piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, fine. I'm not going to give him a uh, the good birthday present and Christmas present that I already have fucking ready for him. I was going to give him my old Steam Deck because I got the middle of the road Steam Deck. Not the worst one, but not the best one. And... Um, it can't even handle Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I mean, it can handle it. It plays it well. Or it plays it well enough. But memory size can't even handle it. I had to go buy a separate SD card for it. 
just to play Baldur's Gate 3. It's the only game I have installed on there. So I was gonna give him, I was gonna buy the uh, the big Steam Deck, the the big the big money one, the big baller one, and gift him my old Steam Deck. But motherfucker can't even call me for my birthday. Can you believe that shit? I fucking can't believe it. Absolutely can't believe it. The uh, dagger. Yep, dagger. That's uh, that is the way. That is the way. Okay, we saw all the boss. That worked. That worked. Very good. Very good. Anyways, criteria number one. For the 15 minutes in which I played this game, was I entertained? Yes. Fuck yes. Ghouls and Ghosts, very entertaining. Still, still frustrating, but a good frustrating. It's not cheap. I don't feel like it's cheaply unfair. I feel like it's the difficulty is right there. It's fair. I'm like, look, you make the wrong jump, you're going to pay for it. And you will continue to pay for it until you learn. You must unlearn what you have learned. Criteria number two. Now that I played this game, does my memory of this game exist outside the lens of nostalgia? Yep, sure does. It's in nostalgia and it's out of nostalgia. It, it rocks. It is solidly good, exceptionally good for its time. Still good, still worthwhile. Still, I feel kind of like I want to play like a long play of it. That would be very frustrating and I would get very annoyed when I have to replay the entire fucking game all over again. So I'm not going to. <laughs> That's not going to happen. No, 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 no. Oh, God. All right, y'all. Uh, thank you very little. And you are welcome even less.